so that the time looks really good for me. And roll call. Ms. Matoye? Here. Ms. Fleur? Here. Ms. Black? Ms. Yelsey? Here. Ms. Anderson? Here. Ms. Bartow? Here. Ms. Snell? Here. Dr. Navarro? Hello. Here. Hello. Here. <laughs> Are, we're having our conversation on MTS update before we go. In. Yes. We are having a conversation on our MTSS update, and that would be Dr. Navarro. Doc, yeah, it's actually Dr. Diagostino. So let oh, me give you, you a little background on conversations. We haven't done this since 2012, I believe. <laughs> uh, and it's something Dr. Barbo used to always uh, like to use. So we're not asking you to make any decisions. We're not asking you to have, you know, any uh, any uh, uh, position or direction for us. What we want to do is just share with you some ongoing information that's coming up regarding some important topics. And so you know that one of the important topics this year is MTSS. So I've asked Dr. Diagostino to t share with you a conversation he's had and that we could have with you about the launching of MTSS. So, Dr. Diagostino. Dr. Navarro, President Matue, Vice President Fleur, and members of the board, my apologies. I thought we were meeting in the boardroom, so I set up my presentation there. I take it we're here. Here, yes. So may I be excused for 48 seconds Absolutely. to run over there and grab we my... We talk amongst ourselves. Okay. For the public's benefit, it's multi-tiered systems of support. Yes. We talk MTSS. Now, now, now. Are, is there Nobody has to worry about it. Is that, was that what your button was? No, she, well, Mike, Ashley has a button. Well, is everybody there, has a button right now, so let me oh. get all the buttons clear. Well, maybe we're asking the same question. Is there a reason why we're doing the conversation on MTSS now instead of in the regular meeting? Uh, yes, because... Uh, at the regular meeting, it's an official meeting, and you're asked to uh, make a decision or give direction or take feedback. This is more of an open forum between you and staff just to discuss certain topics. And we haven't used this before with this group, but it is something that we used in 2012 a couple of times. And so I just, when as we were talking about how do we share information, this is a, one of the recommendations I made uh, this that we'll be using this year. Well, so this is the first of many. Agenda like this? Yes. 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 I saw it on there, but I mean, this is important information that I think the public knows and people may not necessarily watch this part or be in the room. Okay. I think MTSS is extremely important, so to do it now seems a little strange. Um, it's also, well, we've done several different types of things like this and the public doesn't come. <laughs> and the public doesn't stay and the public doesn't listen. So if it's truly to update us, and it was really important someone would be here, but it's a different format. We're gonna probably have other conversations that are similar, but tonight, if there's anything that we feel should be brought during the attention of the regular board meeting, feel free to bring it up and we can discuss it as a board. The second piece of that is if we're going to have a conversation, I would love to have gotten this ahead of time. I did not get this ahead of time. So if we're having a conversation, I think being informed but is important. I do want to make sure that you understand a conversation is a very low level uh, opportunity. It's not something very formal. Uh, and I, we'd like to approach it that way, that it's not going to be very formal. Uh, however, Phil does have some information that he'd like to share that he shared with principals. Mm -hmm. so. And uh, ready to present, is it possible to get that? Yes, um, there, there you go. go. Perfect, wow. Oh, that was is, can I have a million dollars? Okay, here we go. Only if. So yeah, I, uh, it, President Matre and Vice President Fleur, members of the board, cabinet, thank you for having me here this, this afternoon. Um, just a brief update on what we did last week with the principals. Uh, prior to getting into that, uh, we just want you to know that we've been having a lot of conversations at the direction of the superintendent about systems, creating systems, um, as opposed to piecemealing things or working separately in silos. There's a real focus more than ever before in this district to integrate and connect. And so toward that end, uh, we have created an MTSS, Multi-Tiered Systems of Support Steering Committee uh, that has on that committee two executive cabinet members, Dr. Jockham and Mr. Drake. Uh, Dr. Jockham on the student services side, Mr. Drake on the 
uh, ed division side. And the intention is that we are really purposefully looking at how we can integrate and connect systems uh, in a more comprehensive way, a K through 12 uh, across the entire district. And so we've been having conversations and one of the most critical conversations occurred last Monday when we met with the uh, ed elementary administrative leaders, the site principals, and we had a very candid conversation about where we are and, and where we're going. And so we started with some collective agreements. Things that we hear, oops, Things that we hear a lot, right? And things that we are expected to do as educational professionals. And then we acknowledged the big elephant in the room that we've heard from elementary principals, that they don't have enough time and that they're challenged on resources and that we need more specialized personnel and that some of our existing systems need to be revised and that we need to get more buy-in from teachers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. One of the big things that we're seeing, and in fact, we talked about it as recently as cabinet this morning, is the issue of wellness, and not just wellness for our students and our families, but wellness for our employees as well. And so we're, we're looking comprehensively, um, involving all of our divisions, not just ed division and student services, but human resources, as well as fiscal and maintenance and operations. And all of these things are creating a comprehensive understanding of where we are as a district. But really for us, the focus is, you know, how do we, how do we integrate the instruction to include well-rounded, holistic uh, conversations for the, the, the well-being of students and families? And we then looked at the research on social emotional learning, and we oriented ourselves to making sure that these are the things that we should be focusing on. And then we went a little bit further and looked at the quality indicators of a positive school climate. And again, so the purpose of this conversation with the elementary principals was to kind of orient ourselves to the latter half of this discussion, which is where do we need to go and what do we need to do? So I'm kind of, I'm tipping my hand to you in what we did with the principals, but we were, we were setting the stage, if you will, for the conversation, the most important conversation that we needed to have. And then we focused on um, a review of needs and resources. And we framed the conversation by understanding that when we look at most students who are served, most of them benefit from tier one services. Your, your universal classroom, class rules, school classroom, school climate, positive discipline, et cetera, and students who are served in tiers two and three are um, fewer and far between. And then we, we, we um, looked at that against resources, and we came to the understanding that when we, when currently the model is that we have resources expended in large amounts on the tier two and tier three side of the house. Can we discuss while you're talking, ongoing, or do we need to wait till the end? No, uh, whatever, whatever we you prefer. Converse. Yeah, yeah. Mrs. Ford. Well, <clears throat> I guess my question is, um, most kids can be provided in tier one, but in in some respects, my opinion is that there are a lot of kids in tier one that probably need to be tier two and tier three but are not, but we don't have the capacity, whether it's, whether it's the staff that truly understands what a kid's <coughs> going through, whether, you know, I think there's a whole bunch of other things in there um, that we see through, you know, our evidence with lots of different opp opportunities and, you know, committee work and wellness and mm -hmm. SARB and everything, that mm -hmm. our kids are falling into the tier one and it look like a tier one, mm -hmm. but, are really not at tier one. Mm -hmm. They just happen to be in there because that's where they start. And so, we can't, we, we don't so seem to is, be is able your, to move. Is your question is, uh, is our tier one co as comprehensive as it needs to be? Well, I'm not sure it's, I, I don't, I'm not sure it's a comprehension. I, I just think that they're not being identified. Mm -hmm. I think that 
we have yes. this vast majority. It's like the silent majority, but they're right. not. There are kids in there that we know are falling right. through the cracks, and so they're lumped into a tier one when, in fact, you know, it's the old adage. If you act out, you're going to get noticed and you get moved. Right. The, the kid that is the quiet, totally withdrawn kid, the <clears throat> withdrawn kid may get noticed, but it's that kid that's, you know, just is going about his business, right. and all of a sudden you find out that dad's in jail or mom just right. committed to, you know, just those types of things that are really. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I do believe, um, I do believe that the work of the MTSS task force is to ask some critical questions around that very okay. subject, okay. which is, and Dr. Bauermeister has heard me say this because we share participation in the secondary principles discipline uh, meetings that we've been having to look at discipline and look at the ways we can rethink how we're doing things. And, and the critical question is, are we doing all we can for every kid? That's the question we are currently exploring with the secondary principals. It's the question that I asked the elementary principals, and I'll show you in, in just a moment, a ladder slide. Uh, actually, uh, uh, it was a short video clip, but it, it, it got the point across. Uh, but I, I think we are, to hopefully allay your concern, we are looking at the question, are we doing all we can for every kid? Um, uh, have we provided enough professional development for our classroom teachers in the area of socially emotional positive classroom climate? These are the, these are the things that the, that the MTSS steering committee will recommend as we move forward strategically as a district. I was just thinking, oh. and making, to alert the board, no, I want you to talk because I already told you to, but I, for this format, we're not looking at buttons, plus they're hard for me to see right now. And, but if you have something to say, just be polite. Wait, wait your turn, but then speak. So Dana, I know you two both had a light up, so go ahead, thanks, Karen. Um, just because I initially looked at that and felt how you did, but I think, you know, we, we historically have been the other way with the more in tier three, putting more of our yeah. resources in. And we've talked a lot about now taking it down to tier one. And mm -hmm. I think that's important mm -hmm. because yeah, there are a lot of kids in tier one that need more services, but this gives us an opportunity to identify those mm -hmm. kids more and to to have more of the the resources that are looking at them before it gets to be a tier two or tier three. And right. And before so, you so do that, is the drop, it says a view, review of needs and resources. In my mind, the purple is a need. But the resources should be kind of like a giant oval because I don't want to take resources away from tier three if we need them there. I just want to add a whole bunch more to tier one, but then I've yeah. always been accused but if of we spending put them more in tier one, so the thought is you don't We might have to not get need it. it, but for right now, we're going to need a whole bubble. Right. So, so to this, Ms. Matway, this was for the purpose of illustrating a point. That right. point being that many times in many districts, while most kids are captured in tier one, the amount of services, intensive services that are provided to students in tier three consume a significant amount of resources. Right. And to Ms. Yelsey's point, um, we believe that a new approach is required. Now, some of you saw this slide at the CSBA presentation that I gave, but when you look at the delivery of services, um, traditionally we expend a lot of resources on the tier three end. Um, because we have IEPs that have to be counseling, mandated counseling services, wraparound services, educationally related mental health services, all of those things intensify on the tier three side. And so what we need to do is, as Ms. Yelsey is pointing out, create an approach where we try to level things out and be a little bit more proactive. And so to your point, Ms. Matoye, that's where the teardrop goes from a teardrop, an Got inverted it. teardrop to a more oval like um, allocation of resources. Dr. DeArts, you know, I want to interject something here that I think is a really important point. Um, we, we need to think of MTSS and, because it's, it's services. It's a system of services for students. And you'll notice that in the slide it even says tier one services, tier two services, tier three services, not tier one kids because mm -hmm. we, kids are not Got in it. tiers, services are. So a student may get, uh, or excuse me, in tier one, it's for all students. Okay, that's very, very important. Tier one is for all students. 
And then some students may need tier two level supports in some areas, but not in others. And some may need tier three supports in some areas and not in others, and they might get those supports and then no longer need those supports. So think of the tiers as support services. Kids are kids. Getting, and your point I think is very well taken, is every kid gets the support that they need to be successful, whether it's in tier one, tier two, or tier three, whether it's in social emotional um, uh, discipline or I mean behavior or uh, or academics. So, so I, I just want to set us on, on the right track. That's very that's a very key uh, uh, point here. Um, I just wanted to um, have a discussion more about secondary. I know we always start in elementary, and um, but I will. Thank you, mothers. That was great. Oh, <laughs> sure, sure. Apparently, I can't guilty. do it. Um, but for staff development, I, you know, as a board member, and I'm sitting, a long sitting one, so I'm probably moving the chairs up, you know, but I get so many calls of just desperate frustration from grandparents, mm -hmm. aunts, and uncles of secondary kids. And then they reach out, because I tell them, we have a process. You go to the principal, you go to, I mean, you go to your teacher and you discuss it. And, and it just seems, you know, not across the board, because, you know, I will tell you, some counselors and teachers are phenomenal. But are we going to, are we going to all concentrate this on elementary? Or we have no. any staff development set up for high school or? We are currently you know? having discussions. So, so where we are in the MTSS journey, mm -hmm is that we have established a steering committee okay. made up of critical key personnel going all the way up to executive cabinet members, Drs. Mm -hmm. Jockham and Mr. Drake. Right. No, I heard that. We, are, we, we have gathered input. I think we have finished the information gathering admiration of the problem phase mm -hmm. of the conversation. And now it's a matter of looking at what the principals are telling us looking at what the best practices are and then so secondary making recommendations. Principles, secondary me. principles you've interviewed and Yes, had so, okay, so, so the secondary principal discussions are mm -hmm. happening inside the secondary principal discipline conversations that okay. I have been having and Kirk has been attending those meetings. Mm -hmm. And then as you know, um, uh, doc, uh, Mr. Drake and Mr. Lee Sung have mm -hmm. been leading princ secondary principals discussions around academic metrics and things of that nature. And so because uh, John, for example, is uh, serves on uh, multiple committees, I'm on multiple committees, right. Kirk is, we're, mm -hmm. the leadership is hearing these things from different angles and different perspectives. I, I would believe you would. Mm -hmm. So I would be interested down the road just to be updated on that, you know, Another on the secondary. Another I know. Well, you know, you can text me. I mean, <laughs> I mean <it's, clears throat> because I don't know how we're going to fit all these conversations. And it's exciting and rewarding to know that everybody's working so hard, mm -hmm. you know, identifying this. But but I also, you know, one, you know, will follow another, you know. And it's just difficult right. to be all things to all people. But, you know, it's, it's an interest of mine for, I can't tell you, from day one, mm -hmm. you know. And then, now we're going to roll in to the second half of the school year, and that's when the phone calls even become more because parents are becoming aware after first semester grades, Something's mm -hmm. going on, you know, and uh, whatever. So right. Moving along. And so, uh, so what we did is uh, now there's. This is. I want to be absolutely clear about the conversation that happened surrounding this slide. Okay. Uh, we talked about additional. We we shared with the principals the student services vision for additional support that we're looking at. Uh, in the area of SEL, because that's what they wanted to hear. What are we doing at the district level to support? And so, as you know, this idea of behavior specialists and elementary counselors has been bandied about. And in 2019, 2020, we have committed to hiring to mm -hmm. behavior specialists. Mm -hmm. That was a part of the plan. Um, we also said that moving forward in 2021 and 2022 that we were looking at certain possible other hiring of personnel. But again, there's a big asterisk. I want to be absolutely clear about this. This asterisk is obviously based on funding and board priorities. Mm -hmm. So this is not a commitment. This is not a promise. This is not a... Other than the... This is an goal. aspirational... Other than the 20, the 1920. 
that, other than that's 1920. A, that's, a, that's disappointing. So obviously anything that's going to be discussed for 2021 has to be a part of the superintendent's budgeting process. It has to be a part of conversations with critical stakeholder groups, human resources, et cetera. So I just want to be clear. But the elementary principles were, where are we going? And this has been something that Student Services has been talking about for some time. We've in fact worked with Jeff Trader to look at funding sources and where we might go. And I know this has been discussed at, at other le uh, higher levels. Um, but for further consideration, we are also revising our SARB practices, developing systems to connect more frequently and be responsible to res responsive to principal needs. We're looking at best practices in other districts. Dr. Navarro put me on to the Director of Student Services at Irvine. Mm -hmm. They're doing some amazing things with what are called wellness coordinators um, at the sites. Um, and then we started having a conversation with the elementary <coughs> principals, similar to what we're doing with secondary, mm -hmm. what else should we be doing? Mm -hmm. And then I showed a sh this short video, and I'm not gonna show it right now in the interest of time. I know we only have until four o'clock, but it was that clip from Apollo 13 where they find out that they're running out of oxygen mm -hmm. and uh, they have to take this square cartridge and mm -hmm. put it into a round hole using nothing but this. Mm -hmm. And they throw a bunch of things on the table and this is what we have. And so I, I challenged the elementary principals to um, work with what we have. Um, we know that we need to rethink professional development and how teachers are um, being trained in SEL. We know that we agree on SEL systems to inform our work. Yes. I've I, social emotional what learning. Learning. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Didn't know what the L was. Um, we we need to do more sharing of best practices. There are some schools that are doing really great SEL work with the resources that they have, and there's areas to replicate. And we need to continue questioning. We need to always be in this active mode of inquiry, looking at um, what we need to do to move things forward. So as far as the report that Dr. Navarro asked me to give you at this juncture of where we are in the journey of moving towards more multi-tiered systems of, of, of support, I believe that our conversations are now getting to that critical point of where the MTSS committee can start formulating some recommendations that will be reviewed by obviously executive leadership and then brought to you through some forum. And as we strategically plan for the allocation of personnel and resources, we will enhance services as a district moving forward. I'm confident about that. That's great. Phil, I, I had my light on for a that's while. Great, I'm sorry. No, I, you must, I said don't wait for a light okay. alert. Um, so, so I thank you for doing this. I appreciate sorry. the review of it. Um, my question was, are you looking for input and feedback from us? Is this a report for? I was simply asked by Dr. Navarro to give you an update of where we are. Oh, where we are. Okay, okay. thank you. you can ask whatever you want. Okay. Uh, so basically, I wanted you to hear the thought process that's going on. Okay. Okay, and this is early in the, in, in the process because they won't, the hearing committee met twice. Yeah, twice. Twice, and so this was the first conversation with the elementary principal. And usually we don't tell you anything until, you know, we come up with some more solid right. information. I wanted you to hear what the uh, beginning discussions were and a conversation so that you could hear, you know, what we're going, what we're our challenges are, and what, so what, what we should do to be heard and okay. how we, uh, mm -hmm. what the early thoughts are. Great. And, and so just to close out really quickly, um, at the end of this, prior to the showing of this particular video, um, I asked the principals, we, we brainstormed, and I just wanted to share with you a couple of three themes that came out. Um, you, how can we creatively use existing resources to enhance SEL, delivery of SEL at our sites? How can we use time, late starts and early outs um, mm -hmm. to train? How can we work with teachers to support enhanced classroom mechanics as it relates to the integration of academic delivery of instruction and SEL delivery of instruction? Irvine Unified puts SEL standards on their elementary report cards. Mm -hmm. It's oh, pretty right. innovative. Yeah. Pretty innovative. Um, so we're looking at other districts. We're working with other districts. So my report here to you today, and happy to answer any questions, is we're getting to that critical mass where I think we have some pretty good ideas, and then we're going to, as a as a MTSS steering committee, come back to executive leadership with some ideas moving forward. Wow. What so, was the third thing, excuse me, that just came out of that after 
existing resources and how to use them. Um, and then, sorry. And then in the classroom, working with teachers in the classroom to integrate academic instruction with SEL instruction. I kind of like this. I do like this. Um, you have on the on the la on the page number four on the last slide. It says other, which I really liked because other. Yeah, like so what are we? Because I, I, other. Because I don't know everything, and I, the answers are in the room when it comes to getting a bunch of principles right. together, right? So, yeah. so here, here's one question I have, and mm -hmm. I'm throwing it out. You know, when when kids when my kids went to kindergarten, they met with the kindergarten teacher ahead of time, and they sort of did an assess. You know, oh, an how assessment? how many wheels does okay. is a wheelbarrow? Can you tie your shoes? And I remember also Diana Hensley and the 40 developmental assets, mm -hmm. you know, and, the, ch and the, check the checklist. So does, are we prevented, is a school district prevented from doing that type of assessment for uh, every, for every well, kid I think, I think or the, is? I think what we need to be careful of is whenever you do an assessment, you have to have ready some resources right, or right. to identify a kid in need. You can't just do an assessment and not be prepared to intervene. But we also already are doing that. So kindergarten readiness, fall of kindergarten I, I, with I, the EDI. I, the that's early that's development yes. Index. That have had it. I am, I, no, what I'm just saying is, is, it. is there a mechanism by which there can be an assessment like, like Irvine's doing the social emotional. Now they're obviously doing some sort of assessment or some sort of observation or something They're, within the yeah. classroom. They've universally applied second step. So the second step curriculum is okay. universal tier one every school. Every and school. Wow. Every school in the district, uh, at least through elementary, as far as and I know. And do we, do we have We that? use second step. Okay. We use second step, but not necessarily in every classroom as a universal tier one. So again, Got it. In okay. our district, and every district is, is in different, different phases Got of it. this MTSS journey, but in our district, we are, I think we are poised to be prepared to deliver some universal expectations. And, and if you look at what's been happening in the last three to five years, um, systems, 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 mm -hmm. and um, whether it's safety systems or academic systems or social emotional systems, we're moving in that direction. And I see us systematizing um, the integration of academics and social emotional um, behavioral expectations. If I have two questions. Um, are you saying, do we have a social emotional evaluation? Or an index or yeah, what? Yeah, because when the kids do get a test when they come in for kindergarten. Not everywhere. So Ashley, I'm telling you, that might be that one, but I'm said in general. It's not we universal. We were discouraged from doing testing, but what I was told as a principal was it used to be used to say, for parents to say, teachers to say to parents, your child isn't ready for kindergarten yet. And what has to happen is, oh, these are the needs that we see that we can help this child have a successful year at kindergarten. So there are things in place, but we don't have anything that's exactly the same District. Well, district got it. And that, again, that I'm not talking about just kindergarten. I'm just talking about you know those milestones. Of is mm -hmm. is is there a system or is there a tool? Because um, I don't want to yeah. leave this on to the teachers, right. who are already you yeah, know. Right. Well, to, to Miss Anderson's point, the EDI and that that there's enough. There are there are enough students that take that mm -hmm. to create a fairly. Uh, con a high level of confidence in the statistical results and what the data tells us when we look at that is that the kids are coming in with social and emotional deficits. Mm -hmm. um, and, and those social emotional deficits need to be addressed concurrently, simultaneously with academic preparation. So I've been in, yeah, please. Yes. in multi-tiered uh, systems of support. So that's that's a good mm -hmm. question. That's a good one. I think we can walk away with this is right. what are we doing systemically to use tools like EDI 
in a routine uh, basis so that it's part of what we do, not just, oh, let's do this today, but it's planned, it's strategic, and we have plans on what to do with those kids. So I think we're gonna walk away with that from this conversation, and it's okay to have questions from this, because this is a, we're building this, this plane as we're flying it, okay? And so. Well, and you know. Uh, I'm sorry, oh, Ms. Wait, Bartow wasn't ready. Yeah, quick question. Yet. The second part of my question is, when many, but not all, kindergartners have that interview before they enter kindergarten, as my kids did, mm -hmm. um, are we, if we have a, a system that's great, are we considering using Second Step a, as part of that system for all the schools? So again, the, the, um, the rollout of an F MTSS plan is something that we have to be very deliberate and we have to be very conscientious and very um, focused about. We're gonna go slow to go fast. And so it is one of many um, potential um, recommendations. Uh, what I do know is that more than ever before, I think our principals are ready for some universal direction. Um, more so than when I was a principal maybe, so, <laughs> you know, but, but they are, uh, they are a very committed group of educators who want the best for kids and families. And so there's a lot of collaboration and a lot of cooperation. I think Kirk and, and would agree with me, certainly uh, it, when we have these conversations around discipline, it's not, I want to get rid of these kids. It's, we really want to know what resources are available to help them. And then we push back with, well, are we doing everything we can? Have we had this conversation or this conversation? So I'm, I'm excited about what's going to happen in the spring. I'm excited about the potential um, um, recommendations that might come out of the steering committee uh, in these areas. But it is a very, um, you're talking about, look, Irvine, their SEL budget is $18 million. Uh, when you look cool. at their wellness coordinators and all the people that they are, uh, putting together, and that's uh, wow. that's no small chunk of change. How many yeah. schools do we have that are using Second Step now? Do I don't know? know that answer off the top okay. of my head, Ms. Matway. Not a problem. But I do. It's it's used throughout the district at various grade levels, no. elementary. Oh, okay. So, but it's not in a system yet. It's though. not a systemic right. thing. It's not systemic right. yet. I got it. Got it. So we're moving towards that. So uh, this doesn't have to be the end of your questions. If you think of others, just send them to me and I'll get them to Phil and Sarah and John. And we, uh, you know, these are points that we can continue having conversations about. This is our first step into a conversation. So uh, at some point I would like to speak with, uh, you know, hear from you uh, how we can make this better and how we can improve this. But it's supposed to be just a conversation. Okay, this isn't going to be a full blown out presentation. Phil just happened to have this because this is what he did with the principals. So I don't think you can expect that every time. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's a way to keep you, uh, it's, a, it's a way to keep you updated on our thinking and where, and where we're going. And you don't often get to see that. And I really was trying to make an effort to help you in, get a window into, into what we're doing here, okay? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thank Phil. You. Absolutely. No. That being said, do we have any? Yes, we do. We have two cards, both from Mr. Dowdy. One is on agenda item, closed session agenda item. Do you want to go alphabetical? Or would you, you, you get them both. I'm calling you up twice. You don't actually have to go back and sit down. So, since you're the only not. one speaking. Yeah. If somebody else comes up, I'm making you go back. But. Yeah. Probably, probably not too many other people. Oh, Martha, you need to read the closed yeah. session on, or Dana, closed session on pub, <coughs> public comments for closed session. I got it. Um, this is an opportunity for the public to address the board regarding items on the closed session agenda only. Each speaker has three minutes to address the board, and speakers may not cede unused time to other speakers. Per board policy 9323, there is a maximum of 20 minutes of comments per topic. With board consent, the president may increase or decrease the time allowed for public comments, depending on the topic and the number of persons wishing to speak. When addressing the board, it is helpful if you state your name and address for the video record. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> yes, ready? So hello, I'm Britt Dowdy, president of the Newport Mesa Federation of Teachers, and so this is regarding uh, agenda item 4A, which is evaluation of the superintendent. Um, and so I just wanted to preface this uh, first by stating 
Uh, it has come to our attention through past board members or other past cabinet members that we've talked with over the years that often uh, <coughs> this agenda item becomes a catch-all for an ability to talk about a multitude of different topics. Uh, and so um, I would like to just state that our expectation as the union is that uh, when the board has this conversation, it's specifically about the superintendent and his goals and your expectations of him and his performance to those goals and not related to other items that might be related to litigation or negotiations or district-wide goals or other things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And the reason I state that is because there are avenues for those things to come out. Um, I believe uh, there are avenues for the district goals to come out in a public forum and for the other items to have specific closed items agendas. Uh, we uh, believe that every employee does deserve a fair evaluation. Uh, we uh, think that it's appropriate to start that process early. And so whatever you deem fit for Dr. Navarro uh, is your decision. Um, uh, if the board uh, uh, wants to receive input from the Federation, uh, we can provide it up upon your request. Uh, that's not our purpose today. We just wanted to make those introductory comments. Thank you. Walk away, come back. Dr. Dowdy, number 4D. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir, for 4D, uh, this is regarding uh, potential litigation. We are, as the Federation, we're unsure as to what uh, the um, topic is for your uh, consideration today, but again, as I just said before, uh, we believe that this is a topic that's appropriate for just whatever that litigation process is and should not be a catch-all. Um, uh, one thing that we know that we have been involved with a legal complaint is regarding a uh, unfair labor practice. Uh, I'm assuming that you may be getting an update on that um, from Ms. Olson because we were in a legal hearing previously. And I just want persons in the public to know that uh, that case is still pending and it's not appropriate for details of that case to come out to the public. So it's appropriate for this to be a closed conversation. Um, um, and so that is the only thing that we wanted to say to that effect. Um, if your discussion is regarding working with legal counsel about negotiations, um, we believe that that should be, fall under a different category and should have its own agenda item. Uh, we are a bit concerned because we haven't seen that agenda item show up during this calendar year. Um, and we're going to a mediation hearing um, in a couple of weeks. We look forward to reaching an agreement. And we hope there's a mechanism that the board has for working with Ms. Olson and, and their legal counsel to give them advice and your guidance so that we can reach a, a uh, resolution. Uh, we just don't know that this is the appropriate agenda item if that's where the conversation is happening. We believe that it should be under a topic that says closed conference with chief negotiator, and that should show up on an agenda item. That's all. Thank you. Dr. Dowdy, I, I, I assume it's okay for us to hold you to the same expectations regarding the PERB case as well, right? That is correct, Okay, sir. thank you. Yes. Not seeing any further um, public comment cards. I recess into our closed session. Yes. Thank you. Call the meeting back to order again. This has been probably one of the quietest call everybody back to order ever. Um, I know I, I had just wasn't sure. I'm going to be doing the readout before we do our opening ceremonies. Um, earlier today... Earlier today, in closed session, the board took action in student discipline case 19-05-76. The board accepted the findings of the expulsion hearing panel and rehabilitation plan as amended. The vote was seven in favor, zero against. And in closed session, the following, that's, yes. The, thank you. Mm -hmm. You think by a year I would figure it out. <laughs> In closed session, the Board of Education took action to approve the resignation agreement and general release for employee number 201910HR. The roll call vote was as follows six ayes and one absent. Now, we will have a moment of reflection and the Pledge of Allegiance led by Haley. <laughs> It's okay. Yes, it's okay. I'm going, we don't have Ready? Begin. 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. <clears throat> Back to business. I need a motion to adopt the agenda. So move. Uh, oh, before I, I, we, yes, mm. I, that's what that was, Yes, um, thank you. Uh, we lost a very valued member um, of our school board uh, family, um, David L. Boyd, who was the Orange County um, trustee for this area as well as for the north part. Um, passed trustee away, area two. trustee area, area two, mine. yeah, because he's mine too, um, and he passed away on November 22nd from a rare blood disease. He was a, a, a true champion of public education, and he will be sorely missed, so I'd like to adjourn in his memory, please. Absolutely. Second. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now I need a motion to adopt the agenda as added. Motion to adopt. So moved. Mrs. Snell, second. I'll second. Thank you. Mrs. Barto seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed? Okay. Adoption of the minutes from November 19th and December 3rd. So moved. Mrs. Boyd. Second. Thank you. Mrs. Fleur moved. Mrs. Barto seconded. Anderson. Oh, thanks. Sorry. <laughs> cool. Good correction. It was moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0. Annual organization meeting. Dr. Navarro, Mr. Secretary. Okay. Okay. I need someone to move to open the annual organization meeting. So moved. So moved by Mrs. Black. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Fleur. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Okay, 7-0. Okay, we are going to start uh, required appointments. Uh, first on the list is the uh, election of the board president for 2020. Do we have any nominations from the floor? I nominate Martha Floor. Okay. Second. Do we have a second? Second. Chelsea second. Yes, okay. So Mrs. Black nominated. Mrs. Floor seconded. Mrs. Yelsey. Any other nominations? Do we have a motion to move, close nominations? I move to close nominations. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Nay. Um, Nay. Okay, okay. One, one against. Okay, okay but Mrs. Uh, Fleur is up for board president. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Oh, uh, is that a nay? Nay. Yes. Okay. Six one. So Mrs. Floor has been appointed board president for 2020. Um, I have a comment. I have a question, a point of order. Okay. So you didn't approve the nominations being closed. Did you want to nominate somebody? No. Oh, okay. I just wondered. <laughs> okay. Um, vice president for 2020. Uh, do we have a nomination? Move the nomination of Karen Yelsey. Second. Ms. Floor nominates Mrs. Yelsey, seconded uh, by Mrs. Matoye. Move the nominations be closed and a unanimous uh, vote be cast. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Um, nay? No nays? Okay. Uh, all in favor of Mrs. Yelsey uh, to be uh, vice president for 2020? All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. Against? Okay. Vote passes 7 0. Congratulations, Mrs. Yelsey. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Okay. Uh, board clerk, uh, do we have nominations from the floor? I nominate Dana Black. Okay, Ms. Matoy nominates Mrs. Black. Do we have a second? Second. Mrs. Floor seconds. Any other nominations? I would like to nominate Michelle Barto. Okay. Moved by Mrs. Anderson. Do we have a second? Can I second myself? No. 
Why not? I don't know why not. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay, okay. Seconded, seconded by Mrs. Barto. Okay. Do we have a motion to close nominations? Move the nominations be closed. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, first, uh, all those in favor of Mrs. Black for board clerk? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, do <laughs> let's do a hand vote. All in favor of Mrs. Black? One, two, three, four. Five? Five? Okay. Okay. Five. All in favor of Mrs. Bartow? Aye. Aye. Two. Okay, Mrs. Black wins 5 2. Congratulations, Mrs. Black. <laughs> Thank you. Can I, I have another point of order. Um, can you nominate yourself? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Thank you. <laughs> well, darn. <laughs> <laughs> Did your pa time pass? I'm sorry. My, my time pass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, approve uh, election of CROP res representative. For the audience, CROP stands for Coastline Regional Occupation Program. They provide uh, career uh, support to us as well as uh, courses for students who want to go into the world of work. I'm not a, it's <clears throat> actually for the alternate. Oh, it's for the it's alternate. Only for the alternate. Okay. Because you have a two-year term. I have a two-year term. Oh, there's okay. what it says right there. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is for the alternate. I right. nominate Michelle Barto. Second. Okay. Okay. So Mrs. Snell nominates Mrs. Barto, seconded by Ms. Matoye. Any other nominations? Okay. Do we have nominations be closed and a unanimous vote be cast? Okay. Nominations are closed. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, all in favor of electing uh, Mrs. Uh, Barto to the crop board? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Okay. 7 0. the prop board? Crop board. Uh, we, it's kind of easier if we follow along on, on oh, our okay. matrix at this point because that's what we're following. It's 11 D. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, the crop yes. does. Okay. Dr. Yes. I mean, Mrs. Flirt um, asks oh, for, okay. I move the nominations be closed and a unanimous oh, vote be you. cast. When we vote on that, that means we voted for unanimously to vote that way, so we don't have to vote again. Yeah, we only have to vote once. Oh, that's true. I'm okay. sorry. That's okay. No, no problem. problem. Okay. That's all right. You're learning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you catch me every year on that one, okay? <laughs> every year I, I forget about that. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, 11E, uh, approve the election of a representative to the nominating committee on the County School District Organization Board 2020. Um, Mrs. Black, you've served in this in the past. Do you want to give a description of what happens on this committee? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Does it meet? We don't meet once, unless once, they... <laughs> once, a, once a year. Once a year, and that's meet. it. Did you meet? Well, no. Mm -mm. Yes. They didn't, yeah. 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 But just in case there's a reorganization, let's right. say a, <laughs> uh, a committee, a district wants to break apart, right. then that's what this committee would be and then uh, it's really I nominate Ashley Anderson. Sounds good. Okay. Excellent. Nominated uh, Ms. I'll Anderson. Second. There needs to be a by, uh, rep, an alternative. Wait. Yes. Second. By um, Ms. Yelsey. Do we have, who was the second? Second. 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 Mrs. Snell was Mrs. second. Oh. Snell was second. Snell was second. Okay. Uh, do we have any other nominations? Mm -hmm. I move that the I move that the nominations be closed and a unanimous vote be taken. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Now we need an alternate. Seven zero. I nominate Kay. Mrs. Floor as alternate. Mrs. Floor is alternate. We do. do we have a second? <clears throat> second. Snell seconds. Okay. Mrs. Black nominated Mrs. Floor as alternate. Mrs. Snell uh, seconded. I move that the nominations be closed and a unanimous vote be taken. I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we have Ms. Anderson, you are a representative. You wait. And Mrs. Floor, you are the alternate. <laughs> and this is, we, we, we well, missed, this, this is where we made, 14. This is where we missed Judy Franco because okay. <laughs> this was her deal. Her thing, yeah. Okay. Approve the election of liaison with Special Education Community Advisory Committee, CAC 2020. Uh, move that we appoint uh, Mrs. Black and uh, Ms. Matoye. Second. Okay. okay. And Mrs. Okay. Black second. So we have the nomination of Mrs. Black and Ms. Matoye Move to the, the committee. Move the nominations be closed and a unanimous vote be cast. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Approve the election of School Attendance Review Board, SAR, representatives for 2020. Do we have nominations? I nominate Mrs. Yelty, Mrs. Floor, Ms. Matoye, and Ms. Anderson. 
Yes, Mrs. Black yes. nominates four. So, but then does anybody want to be alternate? So that's the question. We can take three nominations and then we can do an alternate afterwards, separate. Because you can only nominate three right. that serve. Okay, well maybe you nominate one at a time then. Okay. Okay, what do you I, think? I nominate Ms. DLT. Second. Um, okay. Move that nomination be closed and a unanimous vote be cast. All in favor of Ms. Yelsey, please? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Mrs. Yelsey, you're appointed. Uh, move that uh, we appoint Mrs. Matoyer. Okay, Ms. Matoyer. I'll second that. Okay, so that is moved by Mrs. Fleur and seconded by Mrs. Black. I nominate, oh. Mm -hmm. Move that nominations be closed and a unanimous vote be cast. All in favor? Aye. 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 All, any opposed? Okay, Ms. Matoy, 7 0, second member. Go ahead. I, I nominate Ms. Mrs. Floor. Wait a minute. Oops. She she, I, you I, started. she started. I nominate Mrs. Ms. Anderson. Okay, Mrs. Barto nominates Mrs. Anderson. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Mrs. Snell? Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Uh, so, uh, do we have any other nominee? Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have a motion to close? Motion to close. <laughs> motion to close nominations. Second. If nobody, yeah. Okay. Can't I, you can I nominated you know, Mrs. You, you haven't nominated. Any, oh, haven't I didn't hear you yet. do that. I'm sorry. No, well, she I, did. I did it first, and then you said stop, stop, Mrs. <laughs> because well, she I, she was absolutely. I get that, but let's. Go okay, back so to he I said nominate Mrs. our nominations closed, and you say no. I'm gonna. No. <laughs> okay, go. They're not closed. I nominate Mrs. Floor. Okay, Miss Matoy. Mrs. Yelsey seconded it. Yelsey seconded. So we have two nominations. Okay, this is for the last uh, standing position. All in favor of Mrs. of Miss Anderson as the third representative, uh, vote aye. 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 Could you raise your hands, please? One, two, three. All in favor of Mrs. Floor serving on SARB as the third re third representative, please raise your hands. Aye. Aye. Okay, aye. four. But I also have a question. Yes. <laughs> no. no. Um, we're. We've been talking with SAR, uh, uh, in SARB about expanding it and having some school site mm -hmm. SARB meetings. Is is it possible to do a rotation for something like that? So we could have two alternates. Or, yeah, or or so so for our anything. purpose for our purpose right now because that's not that's not the slate that's come to us. Uh, but what we could do is we could make one an alternate and you can figure out how to rotate it. The alternate doesn't have to be let out. You can figure a rotation so that there's always somebody out that and, the, and the alternate spot. rotates in, in in circular motion so that you have a th three different people every time. That's so that could be idea. up to the committee. That's a, That's a great okay? idea. Okay. So we don't have to have an alternate. You can have, you can have two. You just have to have only three on Dr. Diagostino's board you can rotate out, and so every every third meeting, somebody's out. You're great. out, okay? Does that sound fair? That sounds great that to me. Well, okay. can we rotate that with the four then? Or that's what I'm saying. That's three. what I'm saying. Okay. So well, that's what I'm saying, Miss so Anderson. Can have four? So no, you, we you, have three, and you're going to have. We'll have one alternate that will rotate in. So you can have four as long as only three meet. Okay. Okay. That sounds You great. can have four, but you have to rotate that fourth person in. So every meeting. There'll be one, 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 so one person. Four equal yes. people, and we'll, I'd like to, yeah. Okay. That's great. That's great. I move that we change the format of this mm -hmm. to have four equal representatives mm -hmm. who are really interested in it, mm -hmm. and that the committee as a group figures out who attends which meetings. Mm -hmm. I second that. Okay, mm -hmm. so, Ms. Black, are you uh, I'm amenable to amenable that. that mo okay, so you. Uh, amenable that's fine. Okay, so it's, uh, is, is it then. Um, so is everybody, so let's uh, vote on Ms. Black's um, um, original motion as amended. As amended. Okay. All in favor of the second of the amended motion? Aye. 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 Okay. So now for the last two. Uh, that means all four. All four. They'll have all four. So we just have to have a, a vote on that. Hmm. All in favor of the amended motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you'll all figure this out, right? Yeah. Okay, good. No, Sherry will figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry's still trying to figure it out. <laughs> I think it's going to be Zoila <laughs> figures it out. 
All right. Cheese, Approve cheese, the election cheese, of representatives to the Office of College and Career CTE Advisory. Do we have any nominations for the CTE Advisory Council? I'd like to nominate myself. Okay. I'm Mrs. Sorry, Snell is. Yeah. And uh, there's two board members. How many can mm -hmm. we have on that? It says. You can have as many as you want, all. but as long as you're. You can't have more than three. Yeah. Okay. So I, I move that we. Oh, who, who, is, who seconded Mrs. Snell? So we have Snell, Yelty, and Black. Okay, Ms. Matoye seconds Snell. All right. Do we have any other nominations? I nominate myself. Okay, Mrs. Black. Mm -hmm. I will second that. Ms. Matoye seconds And I nominate Black. Mrs. Yelty. And I'll second that. <laughs> it's always good to have a, a carryover. Black, Matoye. So we have three nominations, all in... All of those in favor of all three serving on the CTA, CTE committee, uh, please signify by voting aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, carry 7-0. Can I ask a point of order question? Um, I noticed like for last, usually things are done in alphabetical order and they're not. Is there a reason for that or is it just? It's, it's just as they came in. As they came in, the names were just popped in. Okay. So the key is, and uh, you have to watch out. I'll tell you a little story. You have to watch out for people like uh, Dr. Bauermeister. Because <laughs> when I first got to Costa Mesa, the rule was whoever got to the, the, the master schedule first got to put their classes where they wanted. <laughs> oh. And then I quickly changed that rule. <laughs> so that's that's a rule for all. I mean, that's a lesson for all the board members. You got to be in first. Communicated ahead of time, though. But I just I didn't know the rule until I got I there either. So. Point of order question. Thank <laughs> you. Okay. Approve election of District English Learner Advisory Committee. Uh, we have a one-year term for 2020. Do we have any nominations from the floor? I nominate Mrs. Black, Mrs. Bartow, and Mrs. Anderson. Ms. Okay. Anderson. Second. Mrs. Yelsey nominates th three. And Mrs. Uh, uh, Fleur seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So we're going to make sure that um, we'll need to change the existing policies because this one also talks about one member and one alternate. So we need to take a look at the policies regarding appointments and make sure that um, okay. we come in compliance. Okay. Okay. Approve the election of student board member liaison 2020. Do we have a nomination? Uh, move that Mrs. Matoyer. Be the past president. Second. Any other nominations? Move that no nominations be closed and a uh, unanimous vote be cast. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Oh. Nomination. Move, move the appointment of Dr. Navarro as the secretary of the board. Really, Sherry? I second that nomination. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's been moved and seconded. Lauren Matoya. By, okay, uh, moved by Ms. Floor, uh, seconded by Ms. Matoye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> I don't get a vote. <laughs> no, no, you don't. <clears throat> Move appointment of the Assistant Secretary, the Deputy Superintendent, Chief, Chief, Chief Academic <laughs> Officer, Assistant Superintendent, Chief Human Resources Officer, Assistant Superintendent, Chief Operating Officer, Assistant Superintendent, St Student Services. Student Self Support Services. I second okay. that. Okay. Hmm. Move the move nominations be closed and a unanimous vote be cast. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> uh, approve the recommendation of chief negotiator uh, for 2020. I nominate Leona Osa. Second. Okay, Ms. Matoye moves. Seconded by Mrs. Fleur. I All move that the nominations be closed and, the, and a unanimous vote no, be cast. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries 7 0. You want me to read all this one? Just say. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay. You know, let me, uh, you have to move it first. Approve the designation of management personnel 2020. Right, I move that. Got it. These are all self selected, by the way. <laughs> yeah, the certificated personnel are the superintendent, the deputy superintendent, assistant superintendents, executive directors, directors, coordinators, administrative <clears throat> interns, principals at elementary, middle, intermediate, and high school, assistant principals, middle and intermediate and high school, classified appointments, chief financial officer, chief operating officer, communications and public relations officer, executive director, administrative directors, Directors, assistant directors, coordinators, 
financial analyst and facilities analyst. I have a question. Okay. Um, <laughs> don't we have assistant principals at the elementary and are they not part of the designated management group? I was gonna ask about that. Is it assistant principals secondary only? Yeah. It said. Could um, you add assistant, uh, assistant principals, principals elementary? Yes. It's Ass just a. Assistant principals assistant elementary, elementary middle, and secondary. Elementary, middle, and intermediate, and high school. Elementary and secondary. Fine, I can say that. Elementary and secondary. And administrative directors as well. No, oh, perfect. Okay, we new title. Administrative directors. Yes. Do we ever have administrative interns, or do we currently have administrative interns? We have. Sometimes, I was yeah. one. <laughs> we have interns, but uh, you don't designate them with this authority because they're not employees. But the, it, in, says in, that. it says that. They so I, maybe we should take that one off. Administrative yes. intern. Yes. Okay. Unless we'll have to go over this list again, make sure it's... You want me to read it now? Yes, please. Again. Okay. The new list is as <clears throat> follows. Superintendent, deputy superintendent, assistant superintendents, Executive directors, administrative directors, directors, coordinators, principals, elementary and secondary, assistant principals, elementary and secondary, classified employees, chief financial officer, chief operating officer, communications and public relations officer, executive directors, administrative directors, directors, assistant directors, coordinators, financial analyst, Facilities analyst. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Mrs. Black seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Okay, passes 7 0. Okay, now we are moving to optional appointments. Uh, so. Move the appointment of uh, Mrs. Yelsey. Ms. Bartow, would you be interested in serving on that? It actually oh, doesn't. They, they meet. The, it's meeting. a mentoring program right. now, so it doesn't. Well, they don't have all the time. Okay. I mean, that's fine. It says that's it needs monthly, though. I got nominated for this by Mrs. Okay, so floor right. the first time I was on the board. Mm -hmm. okay. Out of nowhere. So, um, what's, what's I'll your motion? Mrs. Yelsey. What's your motion, Ms. Floor? Uh, that, that I was asking Mrs. Bartow whether she'd like to. Sure. Be included. I, okay. So, I'd like to nominate uh, Mrs. Yelsey and Mrs. Bartow. I okay. will second that nomination. Okay, it's been moved by Mrs. Floor and seconded by Ms. Matoye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Approve the election of liaison with Costa Mesa Chamber of Commerce Education Committee 2020. Do we have nominations? I nominate Mrs. Snell, Ms. Matoye, and Ms. Anderson. Second. Okay, seconded by Mrs. Floor, moved by Mrs. Black. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Motion carries 7 0. Approve Costa Mesa Youth Sports Council Liaison 2020. Uh, move Mrs. Snell, Mrs. Black, and Mrs. Matoya. Do we have second. a second? Okay. It's been moved by Mrs. Floor and seconded by Mrs. Black and Mrs. Uh, Snell, Matoya. Can I interrupt for a second? Um, so I, I think I would serve as alternate on that. Do you want to be the alternate or just have three members? I, that we, I think it would be better to just have three members. Okay. It says two board members, but this Never is mind. optional. So this is one of those ones that I think. That do you want, do you want to be an alternate instead? I don't care. I don't well, care. We, we've been discussing it through the year, yeah. you know. But so if somebody but can't an come, alternate. okay, we work on it. We are really a good. Okay, we'll committee work on it. Okay, sure except for last week when all three of us were gone. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. All seven yeah, of us were gone. Anyway. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so are we still have the three nominated. Yes. yes. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Approve the election of legislative representative for 2020. I nominate um, Michelle Bartow and um, Ashley Anderson as alternate. I second. second. Oops. Okay. Uh, was that Mrs. Floor? Yelsey. Yelsey, okay. Okay, it's been moved by Mrs. Snell to... Uh, uh, approve um, Mrs. Bartow as a legislative representative with Ms. Anderson as the alternate uh, and seconded by Mrs. Yelsey. I'm sorry, I said that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Approve the election of NMUSD Visual Performing Arts Committee Representative 2020. Since the way it's worded here, may I suggest that again this can be a three member committee and not necessarily have an alternate? Is anyone in disagreement with that? It's fine with no. me. Okay. 
Then I nominate Mrs. Snell, Mrs. Matoye, and Mrs. Floor. Do we have a second? Okay, oh. Mrs. Black. Okay, it's been moved by Ms. Matoye, seconded by Mrs. Black for Mrs. Snell, Matoye, and Floor to be part of the uh, Arts Committee rep, uh, Council. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Uh, this Newport Beach uh, Chamber of Commerce has been deactivated, so we should yeah. remove it from Wait. the list. Mm. Or is it back on? Get, no, no, it's not. It's not, it's not back mm -hmm. on. So. But if they ever do it, I nominate Miss Bartow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would Maybe I go, she can I get go, it moving I go again. to a lot of their chamber well, things. Well, they but do the mentoring program instead. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we, we need to yeah. take that off of the list. Yeah, because yeah. that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about this multiple year, years. Yeah. 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 Okay. I move that we take it off the list. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Second. I'll second that. Okay, so we are going to skip 11 T. And go to 11 U. Oh my gosh. Approve the election of the liaison with the Newport Mesa Schools Foundation. Do we have a nomination? I nominate Mrs. Snell, Ms. Anderson, and Ms. Flores as alternate. Second. Okay. I call. Moved by Mrs. Black and seconded by Mrs. Uh, Yelsey. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> Approved policy review team 2020. Do we have nominations? I nominate. Ms. Matoye, myself, and Ms. Floor. I second. Is there a possibility that we could do a rotation on this one as well? No. To do what? Huh? Rotation. Oh, rotation. Yeah. Okay. I I actually think that it's better that we have the same team doing it all year. Do we have a second? Opportunity at some point to be a part of it. I know. Right. Do we have a second? I did. Not oh, Mrs. Floor. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to have Mrs. Floor, Mrs. Snell, and Matoye. Uh, Mrs. Snell nominated, Mrs. Floor seconded. I have a plan of order then. Can I be the alternate again? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, and um, Mrs. Anderson is alternate, and uh, that's agreed to by Mrs. Okay. Snell? Yes. Oh, I made the original. Did I make? I made the original. Yes. Do you, is oh, that, yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So, Absolutely. as amended to include Mrs. Anderson as alternate. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Approve the election of the political action representative <laughs> for the Orange County School Boards Association. Actually, if it's all right with the group, I would like to make myself the alternate. If anybody gets upset. So I move um, M Michelle Barto and Ashley Anderson. With Ms. Um, Matoye as an alternate. Well, I, this mm -hmm. is one of those things that in the past, mm -hmm. uh, well, it's it's everybody can all members can go to the oh, go to this meeting. Yes. Yeah. But True. But I right. think it's good to have people assigned people to sure give that a they report. Go, right? Right? Sure that they go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, I second it. So you guys are must goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, seconded by Miss Anderson. Okay, so nominated uh, by, um, moved by Mrs. Black, seconded by, by Mrs. Sander, that uh, Mrs. Bartow, Ms. Anderson are the representatives and Ms. Matoya is the alternate. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Approve the election of Wellness Advisory Committee representatives. I nominate Mrs. Yelsey and Ms. Anderson. Second. Okay, move. I move that we close the nominations and. <laughs> Unanimous vote be cast. Okay, it was moved by Mrs. Uh, Matoye, <laughs> seconded by Mrs. Floor. All in favor? Aye. Hallelujah. Okay. Can I, wait, I have a, an addition, perhaps. Okay. Um, last year, we start, we, the mental health task force was started, mm -hmm. and um, I was on it, and Mrs. Miss Anderson was on it. We kind of self-appointed ours from the begin ourselves from the beginning, but I think it probably should be on here. And I got. I mm -hmm. just got notice of, I, for a hold on the meeting, so I didn't know. That's a good question. So is that? But uh, and if we have that as a committee, I would like to be on it again. So me too. And can we ask? But that doesn't to stop you from well, attending yeah. the There's meeting. You just can't vote or you know, participate. What? I said, is that the difference with like the human relations task force that we can all go to? Or well, I think anybody, it's it's very similar to the wellness of, I mean, mm -hmm. it's the same thing exactly. as the wellness The wellness should advice. be a task force, but yeah. it's not, so. So I believe this is a, uh, uh, everyone's invited and y'all come. Is that right, Dr. Diagostino? So this is a y'all come. Let the come. record show he nodded yes. The only problem is we can't have more than four of you because we mm -hmm. violate the Open Meeting Act. 
So you don't even have to have it. You can all go. We just have to make sure you coordinate. But we if don't you're have not if you're not making any decisions, right. I mean, still there's a, a, a lot of these that. Yeah, but we would still have to notify if we had four. We would have oh, to then notify then the public. I'd like public to have it on together. there, and I would like to be on it. So, so I would as well. Okay, so I'm going to nominate Mrs. Yelsey, Mrs. Anderson, and Mrs. Matoye to serve on the uh, Mental Health Wellness Mental 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 Health Mental Health Task Force. Task Force. Okay, since we don't have this on the agenda and we didn't oh, publish oh, okay. it, oh. we need to bring it to your next meeting. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, I move that we adjourn the ag annual organizational meeting. Um, I, have a, I have a comment. Okay. Um, oh, wait, there's more. There's more. Um, so... Um, I know that um, there's some other committees, and I just I wanted I meant to talk to uh, Miss Anderson about this, but I know that you're on the Early Childhood Committee with the city. Is that as um, a school board representative, or what yeah, is that? Would be one that would be good to add. Okay. So we should. So we need to. Add so that. that next time we need to get information and add it next time. Um, Does the city have to request? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Oh. Uh, we'd have to work with the city because they need to request official board representation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, otherwise, <laughs> you'll be there as a private citizen, which is fine. You okay. know, you can do that. Uh, but uh, when you when they ask for representation, then you appoint someone to be the official voice for the board. So right. we will have to reach out to them and find out if they want an official board representative. Same thing with the walkability committee. I'm not sure if that's if, in what capacity. That's a Kirk question. Kirk. Oh, Dr. Leeson, <coughs> Mr. Leeson. Well, Kirk is on the bikeability. That's right. Kirk. Yes. Kirk. Um, I believe uh, I'm the district liaison on that. I was uh, asked, uh, I believe the mayor asked Dr. Navarro for me to be on that committee. Um, since I live in the city and run all the trails and all those kinds of things, I think that's why they asked for me to be on that committee since I live in the city. As opposed to and, a board member. And I actually believe you... That appointment um, came to us, and we approved. We approved that. Yes, appointment. you did. We approved. It came um, at a request from uh, Mayor Foley. Yes, about three years ago, I believe. Yes, it's been a while. I ju I just think that if a board member is on a committee, it, yeah, yeah, and it needs to be listed so that you know we know. I mean, even if you're on the committee before, when you're not a board member, when you're it, it's a different thing. Yeah. Okay. So I think well, we should and I, and reach I think out to the city or will. just put it on the dang list. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, right after mental health task force. Mental health. <laughs> next, for the next meeting, we'll add that one. Yeah. Okay. But we'll whatever. We'll well, we'll I think those. it's important because I think if you know ahead of time that you can schedule your year yeah. with those meetings yeah. and then and then give a report okay. because those are. Yeah, because I'm interested in right. knowing. But also, I believe we we were ta we tackled this at one point in policies, and I think there is a, there is a policy mm -hmm. regarding. Um, Generally speaking, if I remember, if memory serves me, <laughs> uh, uh, it is when you're uh, requi requested as an official board member mm -hmm. that that is what needs the board approval. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So we could just uh, pass those out, and you can all sign up mm -hmm. on your own without <laughs> having to have a vote. Okay, but we will get those to you. So we have a few things. Oh. Okay. Oh. In recognition of the Oh. <laughs> She wants it recorded. <laughs> For all time. Yeah, she does. It's so um, this is the official, makes it official. Notice they didn't give me a real gavel because they know I would probably use it at home. <laughs> yeah, she well, would. dinner, please come to order. Yes, yeah, she would. Thank you. So we have a few things here. Um, we have a couple. So um, on behalf of the board, uh, I know what you really wanted. So as you open oh. these, then we'll, uh, I'll ex we'll explain. It's one of those real nice cards where they tell you you were great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll I'll take it, you know, on any given day. I Ooh. actually I actually said you met expectations. You met our expectations. <laughs> 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 I didn't exceed. Not exceed. So I didn't exceed. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something to strive for. Okay. I have until just big time holiday, so this is the green holiday cup mm -hmm. plus. My zone is the Costa Mesa High School Cup, so oh, this green. will get multiple uses. Oh, Thank you. Right. Open it up. Oh, open it up. Oh. Ooh, 
That's so you can buy more cards. That guy, I could buy more cups. More cups. I wanted a black one because I like to coordinate with what I'm wearing. But they didn't make one. So, <coughs> Or they did it four years ago, and they're now like $90, so never mind. I don't want one that bad myself. Uh, oh, that's an IQ test. Thank you. Ooh. Oh, open up all of them. Help her out there. Yeah, this, no. goes so. <laughs> this goes with it. <laughs> They're transfers. It's a t-shirt transfer. Are these for my walking shirts? Well, or green. She wanted something that identified that she was past president. Oh, yeah. I thought that so, there down there on the little thing where it says so, board member just so, say past president. So she can make up three I, shirts that say past president that on make it. Past president or whatever she wants to oh, say. Oh, thank you. I told Mrs. Snyder that the job I really wanted was goddess of education, and it wasn't listed. Now you can do that. Thank you, very, very much. And. There's more. Oh, that was, the, oh, that, see, I should have opened that first. See, th she has an official, we're going to order past official past president, president shirt. So that all past presidents eventually will get the shirt. Oh. This is like Christmas or a baby shower where you all have to watch something and you don't care. That's okay. You're not in oh, this book. Though. I'm not. Great quotes from great women. I will be someday. <laughs> Live long and prosper. Oh, that's been taken. Okay. Thank you. I want to say. I, I, oh, I think there's a, there's a, there's 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 okay. There's two missing, but I'll find them. Okay. There's two gift cards oh. because um, her favorite two restaurants. There's a gift card for oh. IHOP and a gift card for Ruby. <laughs> because she standards. knows that she knows everybody in there. I know everybody there, and I also know how many points they take. Oh, but this is more. This is more. Aww. Sorry, everybody. Okay. I have to open it up. Oh, I'm sorry. Because it's one of those. Oh! I can put. It doesn't say past president. No, it doesn't say past president. <laughs> I need a little past president one. I have to order a Oh, it has. But it's wonderful. It has a tennis shoe. Because Mrs. Snell and I have been walking like crazy people. We have, by the way, for those of you that care, we have four more schools to go. And that's it. This is Flora. This is Flora. Mrs. Flora, I knew that. It has an apple because I was a teacher. And it has music because no matter where I go, I sing all the time, whether people like it or not. Thank you. That's, that's very cute. That's yeah. definitely me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and it has been an honor to serve with our cabinet and my fellow board members. You are all amazing. Student board members, you rock the house. <laughs> and we are dead serious when we say we want your input. Mm -hmm. And while I love being president, it'll be a, a relief to be sitting down with you guys, because that's way more fun and <clears throat> lot less time consuming. And I know that our board is in more than acceptable hands. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <coughs> and with that, you can adjourn us. No, no, he can't adjourn us. He has to recess us. Well, I'm going to adjourn the organizational <laughs> meeting, and we are going that. to <laughs> recess to change cool. seats. Okay. Do you have any goodies? Yes. Okay, and Fine. there are and there are goodies on the on the table out there for the oh. recess, okay? Yes. So go enjoy, <laughs> and uh, let's give uh, Shara a round of applause. Yay. All right. Okay. Cookies. <laughs> so recess, Wendy, would you like us back, um, President Floor? Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, no more responsibility. Uh, they just have to change. 650? 650? Can you time? do it in nine minutes? Nine minutes. Okay. Um, this is an opportunity for the public to address the board on items within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board policy. Um, 9323, each individual speaker will have three minutes, and speakers may not cede unused minutes to other speakers. There's a maximum of 20 minutes of comments per topic. With board consent, the president may increase 
or decrease the time allowed for public comments, depending on the topic <clears throat> and the number of persons wishing to speak. The board staff or members of the public may request that a specific item on the consent be moved to discussion action. Requests to move consent items must be received prior to the time the board takes action on the consent calendar. All comments are recorded in full <clears throat> on the meeting video record. When addressing the board, it is helpful if you state your name and address for the video record. Um, Dominic Lopez and Helen Flores? I think we have three. Okay. And then uh, Joe Fischetti, you'll be next after that. Joe, why don't you go ahead, come ahead and, yeah, we'll uh, yeah. take you first. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Oh, they're gone? Okay. Yeah. Good. Go ahead. Is that right? Okay, great. Um, hi, so good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Joe Fischetti, and I've uh, resided in Corona Mar for since uh, 1974. So I've been a student through here and gone through college and back as a teacher. I've been here for 26 years and actually coaching for about almost over 30 in the district at both sides of the bay. Um, and uh, Karen Yelsey asked me to come up and speak tonight. I'm on the wellness committee also. And um, We've been talking about safety a lot in our area, and I work at Ensign Intermediate School. And just a little over four years ago to the date, uh, my brother was passed, my brother passed away. He was hit by a car at um, 17th Street in Rutland. Mm. And um, had a tragic, <coughs> like fairly tragic death that day. And uh, moving forward over the four years, there's been different things and there's been more accidents in the area. Mm -hmm. And um, as of late, uh, I've noted that uh, the accidents are still continuing and they're not stopping. Um, a month ago, my student teacher, I have a student teacher from Cal State Long Beach, um, he was hit tragically right down the street. Beacon, his car totaled. Mm -hmm. He was able to pull it over to the side, walk to school, because I heard the, the, the crash, um, maintained himself, got himself together, and I said, do you want to teach? And about 20 minutes later, he finished teaching. Mm. Um, but he wasn't hurt other than his neck and back a lot slightly, but he made it through it. Um, I was hit twice last year. Um, we had a student with the crossing guard that works there now um, hit by a car by Harbor. You might have been familiar with that a year ago, 16th mm -hmm. Street, with the crossing guard. And he's right. now in front of our school in Beacon, and I've become good friends with him. Um, and just uh, a few months ago, I had after school, and I was doing stuff with clubs, and I'm about 3.30 in a car came ripping down. You could see a guy who was vaping in his car about 50 miles an hour, and I was looking to see if he'd stop. He didn't stop, and he blew right through the, the stop sign right there. And Ensign's designed, as it used to be a school district, not a school, or a school district office, there's no um, sidewalks and so forth, and if you've ever been there right when school gets out, it's pretty intense. So I don't have an answer for this problem. I'm here tonight because I'm going to retire in three or four years, and the next generation and my kids and um, we have a house in Corona Mar. I reside in also in Irvine and I would never want this to happen to anybody um, or their kids or family and go through what I've gone through and my mom now is suffering health issues and Leona I have 10 care days now that's a result of that and she's in her 80s and she's housebound so I don't have an answer the police can't be there all the time but something's got to be done to stop it because it's still continuing. And if you don't live in the area, you haven't watched the news, it does. But on a daily basis, things kind of happen. Thank we you. agree. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Um, you know, I think that uh, the and Mr. Fischetti doesn't know this, but our our staff is often in communication with the city planners, uh, the traffic engineers, and uh, there's a lot of discussion. We have a couple of projects. And you know that we've had a couple of projects sprung on us that we didn't know about and caused complications for us and for our students walking out of an elementary school, for example. So um, I'm going to ask that um, Mr. Holcomb have one of his team members maybe have a conversation with you. Uh, you know, our reach isn't going to go all the way to 17th Street, that's for sure. Uh, but we do have a relationship with the city, and we can share that information and share your concerns. Well, 
Well, thank you. Yeah, I have three cousins that live on that street that come to Harbor every day. So they, and yeah. they know to go down to Irvine Avenue and cross at the stop block. But so, but I appreciate that. And I just want to make you guys aware of that. So thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dennis Ashendorf. Good evening and congratulations, President Floor, Vice President Yelsey, Clerk Black, and the remainder of people moving on up. It's a wonderful thing to see. Thank you very much. Mid-August starts accommodate high school sports, and ending the first semester in December may help reduce student stress. However, if you back them for helping academics, you're bringing a knife to a gunfight, tossing a candy bar to a starving person. They are not enough. Strong high school students realize and stress over winter break because they don't have enough time in their AP classes. They realize when topics are merely covered. AP content is fixed. AP tests don't skip questions to accommodate courses ending at 1.30 as our core classes do. Learning in school isn't about the annual calendar, but the daily schedule. Many, if not most, of our high school students leave school at 1.30 and are under pressure not to do homework to reduce stress. Oh my, of course stress has increased. Pressured students know schools aren't serious if classes end at 1.30. Teachers and staff also know schools aren't serious when 1.30 or 11.30 exits become the goal. And credit recovery covers all sins. Morale drops everywhere. With the best of intentions, many of us advocated for eight periods to increase remediation at the price of reduced class time for our strong students. Yet, we went with credit recovery and four plus four, crippling both the weak and the strong. We can generally reduce stress and improve morale by bringing 20% more classroom time to our students. Adopt either variable length classrooms or return to a traditional six period day. Our daily schedules need revamping. Negotiate for the right to modify them now. Be light on your feet, redirect your energy. Use your stubbornness, you've gotten good at that, which is okay. <laughs> Log roll is necessary. Demand what is fully needed to help our children learn. They need time. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Did Bailey's light go on? Uh, now, now it's on. Okay. okay. So, am I allowed to say something? Absolutely. Okay. I just wanted to say that I know that for Newport Harbor and um, probably and for CDM as well, we are changing our schedule next year so that the summer is shorter, so that we have finals before mm -hmm. Christmas break. And I know that that will help the AP and IB classes because the AP classes can only start so late in a year, and this was a little bit troubling. But now that it will start the school year will start earlier next year, it will help the AP process go faster. So that's why I think that's a good move towards decreasing stress is that happening mm -hmm. next year. Thank you, Bailey. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do you have another? Uh, she just wanted to. Okay, I'll call Steve Ray. Well, good evening, honorable board members. Uh, first of all, congratulations on behalf of the Banning Ranch Conservancy to you, Madam President, Madam Vice President, Madam Clerk. Uh, I'm Steve Ray of the Banning Ranch Conservancy. Uh, I came here uh, last month to talk to you about the uh, issue that was going to be coming before the Coastal Commission regarding the fence project and everything, and uh, made two offers to you. One uh, was to uh, do the restoration work for you, uh, we would ask you to, you know, supply the, the materials and plants and stuff like that, but we will supply the manpower uh, and woman power, mostly woman power probably, <laughs> uh, to do the work. Um, 
And uh, then the second thing we did was offer to, uh, to make this an educational experience as well for your students and teachers and anybody else in the school district that uh, may find benefit for it. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we have not had any follow-up uh, from that. Um, and so I would was, came again tonight to reiterate that we would like to do that. Now, the thing is, the, the item is coming before the Coastal Commission two days from now, on Thursday afternoon. And uh, as of about 15 minutes ago, last time I checked, it was still on the agenda. Um, there was some rumor going around that the school district was going to withdraw or ask for a postponement on the item, and uh, that doesn't seem to be the case, at least online. So I presume it's going to, going to go forward. Um, we're going to speak at the Coast Commission uh, on your item, and we're going to uh, reiterate to the commission the offers that we've made you and that we uh, you know, hope to work with you and uh, uh, participate in this project. We think we can make it an, an absolutely wonderful exercise uh, for your students and your teachers and uh, however we can arrange it with uh, your classrooms. Uh, to bring students out there to actually do the restoration and learn what it's about, why it's important, and, and how to do it, uh, opening up some, uh, hopefully some, some eyes to the wider world beyond and even maybe future, uh, uh, you know, environmental careers uh, in the process. Uh, you know, when I talk to people that are in the environmental field, I ask them, how did you get started? And I always get one or two two answers. One is, well, my family went camping all the time, and so they grew up in nature. And the second and the most uh, numerous one I hear is, well, when I was a kid, we went on a field trip. And uh, so this can be a field trip into your own property uh, for your students. So we look forward to trying to help. Uh, I am going to leave a card right here on the table, my card, if anybody would like to call me and talk to me about it before Thursday so that we can try to even coordinate our message and and uh, work toward a better future for that project, we would be happy to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Mr. Ray, thank you for that. I appreciate your offer. But I, have, I hope you understand we're in a legal process now with the Coastal Commission and we can't really respond to you in public. And uh, so we'll, I'll, I'll ask uh, Mr. Holcomb to uh, uh, reach out to you after he checks with our council to see what's appropriate. Okay, okay? thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Dowdy? Item 11A, B, and C. Actually, I'm just going to speak to this. The other one? To the public comment. Oh, okay. So, good evening. I'm Britt Dowdy with the Newport Mesa Federation of Teachers, and I was going to just at the time of the election, say congratulations to the three of you that are now the officers of the board uh, and wanted to let all of you know that it's an open door anytime you want to interact and get uh, our Federation's perspective. I'm happy to, to talk with you and sit down and have a coffee at your favorite <laughs> coffee spots as we've had in the past. So uh, thank you, Mrs. Floor, Mrs. Yelsey, and Mrs. Black for your service to our community. Um, I wanted to, to let everyone know that there has been a kickoff by uh, our federation and many others about the schools and communities first ballot initiative. Uh, we're in a signature gathering phase related to that. Um, there are uh, board members throughout the state who have chosen to endorse this and some school boards in the state of California that have chosen to, uh, to support this initiative. I'll forward you some information if the board chooses to, uh, to support that initiative as well. Uh, and for members of the public that are interested, there's a website, schools and community first, all written out with no punctuation if they want to get more information. It basically is looking at methods to increase funding for public schools, which may not directly impact Newport Mesa, but they help uh, the, the districts all around us. Um, secondly, um, I want to remind the general public that there is a very important uh, uh, education election in March. The Orange County Board of Education race is in March. It's a one and done. It does not move to the November election. Uh, so uh, persons need to get registered to vote quickly uh, and become informed. There are more candidates who've been announcing their candidacy over the past few weeks. So the, um, the group has been growing in terms of candidates. And then finally, um, I've been involved with uh, the CFT on their retirement policy committee. And as such, I've been attending a lot of CalSTRS board meetings and other initiatives. Um, I would just like you to all know that there is a lot of um, strong effort by the CalSTRS board to take the district's interest seriously in terms of contribution rates from the employer 
as well as contribution rates from the employee and how to manage the pension fund in a responsible manner. Uh, also, they are taking uh, some pretty strong strides towards looking at long-term investments as it relates to climate change issues and how long-term changes on real estate values and insurance claims can impact the pension fund. So there's a big complicated effort that's on, in play. Uh, they are working extremely hard and there's a lot at play. It's a complex issue. So those were a few bits of information for all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, Dr. Navarro, superintendent's report. Well, uh, first I wanna thank all of the board members for serving in their past roles last year and looking forward to uh, working with all of you in your new roles. Um, I think, uh, and I won't speak for all the team, but uh, I did wanna acknowledge uh, the uh, fellowship and the learning that took place last week at the AEC for CSBA, where over 5,000 board members and administrators attended the workshop, some incredible presentations, some speakers. We came back with a couple of new ideas, but most of all, it was great to spend time with the board and to you know, kind of uh, be out of our, our regular element and an opportunity to be real with one another at lunch or at dinner and, or in sessions. And thank you for attending the session on equity with grading, but uh, really appreciate your time. I know it was a lot. We asked you to leave your families for four days. We asked you to be away from the work <coughs> that you have to do or the uh, engagements that you have to learn, uh, to uh, open yourselves to new ideas and above all to hang out with us <laughs> as your staff. Uh, but I think it was uh, worthwhile. I enjoyed it, I enjoy it every year and I am tired at the end of the week. Uh, but, uh, but it's a worthwhile activity and I appreciate your time. Uh, second, I uh, thought our first crack at a conversation uh, today with Dr. Diagosin, I wanna thank him for, for doing that, being the first. Uh, but it's a format that, you know, I think we should continue to explore and, and an opportunity to give you information uh, without having the pressure of having to make a decision, uh, but rather just to learn and get and absorb and maybe hear how we're moving forward on, some, on, on many of your priorities and, and, and initiatives. So uh, I look forward to doing more of that and planning that with uh, President Floor. Uh, as well as planning with her an upcoming workshop with uh, AALRR on uh, proper communication protocols, both digitally and through any other formal matters that as you as board members participate in. We know that with uh, all the recent law changes over the last five years that uh, we uh, have to use uh, protocols to provide each other effective and lawful communications. So uh, that we'll be working with Mrs. Fl with Mrs. Flora on identifying that date and that workshop. Thank you. Okay, student board members reports. Bailey. Hi, I'm Bailey Bogard from the Newport Harbor from Newport Harbor. Um, academically, the International Baccalaureate first year students had a meeting yesterday morning to discuss their extended essays and their topics. Oh, that's great. And the second year students just finished their essay reflection, so they're completely done with that process. Athletically, boys basketball and girls basketball are going strong as they both have a winning streak thus far through their season and we're excited to support them. Uh, recent events that occurred, the first was Dinner Theater. Um, our production titled mm. Women in Love uh, went through all weekend with one act being written and directed by a sophomore on campus. So that was mm. an amazing first for our school. Secondly, our school cleanup was this Saturday and we got a great turnout for our second year of doing it. We're hoping to continue the event next year as well. And upcoming events is the Holidays at Harbor Vocal Music Concert this Thursday and Friday in the theater, which is a great fundraising opportunity for the choir program, as well as an interactive family event, so that's super fun. And for unique information, Adopt a Family just started up in our fourth period classes, and we're collecting the presents on Thursday, and we're very excited to continue this Newport Harbor tradition. So, thank you. Catherine. From Costa Mesa. Good evening, President Floor, board members, Dr. Navarro, fellow student board member, and distinguished guests. I'm Catherine Pham, the student board representative for Costa Mesa High School. So on the Mesa STEM program, we participated in the second annual STEM on the Sidelines competition at Dignity Health Sports Park this past Sunday. 
Um, the team, composing of only sophomores, Sophia Catania, Elizabeth Gama, Lucero Islas, and Jasmine Servant, took home second place in the OC region out of 23 teams. They also received the first ever Ducommon Award. And Ducommon is an aerospace and defense company. They've invited our Costa Mesa team to tour the entire Chargers training facility in January. So the 10th grade Delta field trip to LA was today and the sophomores toured UCLA and USC. On November 23rd, CMHS band attended the California State Band Championship Division Finals in which they placed 12th. Girls cross country made it to the CIF State Championships in Fresno where they placed 9th. Um, it was the first time in 22 years that a cross country team from Mesa has made it to the state championships and they've made Costa Mesa very proud with their efforts. Um, senior Diane Molina placed fifth overall and she's earned all state for the second year in a row. She's also qualified for state championships for three consecutive years. Yeah. Girls soccer has started off their season with a 4-0 record. And uh, Mesa Wonderland was held last Wednesday. It is a holiday event featuring all schools in the Mesa zone, and it showcased art, choir, dance, and band. Visual Arts also set up an art boutique, and they sold their own works. Yesterday, there was the Sounds of the Season concert at the Performing Arts Center. So beginning band, beginning strings, intermediate band, orchestra, and marching band played their seasonal selections in this concert. Choir is putting on a Songs of the Season concert this Thursday where they will play their seasonal selections. And on Friday, Jazz Band will be performing at John Wayne Airport to make your travels jollier. <laughs> Santa's Village is this Friday and it's much like Club Rush where CMHS clubs try to recruit more members and they also sell food. Um, finally, uh, Mesa Middle School Cheer received first place on Saturday and got their bid for nationals. Ooh. Thank you. Wow. Terrific. Busy. Thank you. And I'm sorry that uh, Corona Del Mar is not here so that we can congratulate them on their CIF uh, win. Yes. Uh, mm, yes. And they're going on to uh, state, which is very exciting. And championship. 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 And they're playing Saturday, Saturday at Cerritos. Cerritos, four Saturday. So at 4 p.m. It's going to be a long <laughs> drive and fun. But so um, congratulations on that. And I'm sorry Esperanza is not here or back bay. Um, moving on, Julie, PTA. Hello, my name is Julie Link, Harbor Council PTA President, and uh, good evening, uh, President Floor, <laughs> <laughs> board members, Dr. Navarro, and uh, cabinet and guests. Um, I, I didn't have much to report on, but I wanted to give you a Harbor Council membership total. Um, we have 6,468 members, and I wanted to share with you about um, the Parent Education Series on November 20th. Um, it featured Patricia Reba. You know, she's just a great, a great speaker. She has a lot of good stuff. She focused on eating and um, the psychology and food aversion. Um, I heard it was well attended. Um, I took a hiatus with my husband for a couple of weeks, so <laughs> I've missed. Um, anyways, uh, it was uh, well attended, and she gave some extremely important parenting tips. On January 22nd, uh, 2020, is our next Parent Ed series presented by um, uh, Newport Mesa, Angela Castellanos. So that would be pretty in uh Pretty uh, interesting to go to. Um, I also wanted to talk about uh, PTA Sacramento Safari is on 20, uh, February 24th and 25th. And registration for that, if you get the early bird, by um, December 17th, the prices go up. So it approximately costs $700 to go. And, um, you know, it's all the way up in Sacramento. So it's a fun, fun event. It's very enlightening. Um, okay. I also wanted to share, um, you know, we had the Harbor Council PTA Holiday Luncheon was held on December 2nd, and it was such a pleasure having most of you there. Um, it started out the festive season. And as I mentioned that day, I'm kind of passionate about this. Um, mentioned that day, California State PTA, along with Harbor Council, is <laughs> urging our legislators to take more action on the gun violence. And, you know, it, it, 
I mentioned this in, in, um, at the luncheon, and then here on Tuesday, the Estancia thing happened, and I'm like, gosh. So I'm taking it as my little uh, clue that um, maybe this is something that I really need to get out there to our community. Um, it was simple to do. Um, I googled votervoice.net help end gun violence in our schools, and it you you click a take action button, and it directly sends a letter to D Senator Dianne Feinstein and Kamala Harris urging them to uh, do the universal background check along with a lot of other important gun violence prevention legislation, um, like requiring a firearms, the licensing procedure, a three-day minimum waiting period, uh, restricting internet gun sales, and including the kits that modify them, you know, the bump stops and all that stuff, um, prohibiting sale and possession of assault weapons for non-military and non-law enforcement use, and requiring those that already are out there to um, to do a registration process to, for people who are already own them legally, so they should register them. Um, banning the junk guns and Saturday night specials, um, controlling illegal gun possession of firearms and other lethal weapons on school campuses. Yeah, <laughs> um, and uh, supporting state and federal funding initiatives for the research and causes of gun, of gun violence. So, you know, it's it was so easy. I clicked that thing. I was impressed with what they read. I sent it off, and within like three days, I got a letter back um, from Senator Dianne Feinstein um, saying that, you know, that she would do, you know, that's what we need to do. Um, it's just kind of a touched home with us on Tuesday. So um, in our uh, community, and, and it's, it's um, heartbreaking. Our kids, I believe, when I'm hearing from parents, there's, I know we do a great job at our school district with, with the um, police departments and, and all of that. We have a good safety protocol in, but I think that um, we need to focus and get more um, the legislators to do more to protect our kids. It's a different world out there. So um, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item, our most important item of the night. Mm -hmm. Jeff Trader, accepting the... So good evening. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Kirtan Shaw. He's going to make his way to the podium, and as he was walking up there, I'd like to, he's going to get set up here. He's, um, you, you may notice that the, uh, your audit firm has changed their name. It used to be Vavernick Trine and Day. You'll need to set it up. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, have changed their name. Uh, it's ID, ba ID Bailey, and uh, it's, a, it's a little bit bigger firm, uh, which is helpful and provides uh, some more resources. And uh, we have a, a great relationship with your auditors. Um, they're... We find them to be uh, super helpful in in uh, working with us, and and they're they're helpful in in bringing us some thoughts and ideas on how we can do things even better. So, I'll turn the time over to Mr. Shaw to uh, review the audit report with you. Thank you, Jeff. Good good evening. Um, so I'll start with uh, summary of auditors' results, which is pretty much the page where we summarize the results of the audit for the entire year. Uh, so we have three main opinions, the financial statements, uh, federal awards, and state awards at the bottom. So I'll start with financial statements. Uh, our opinion was unmodified, which means it's a clean opinion. Uh, we had no findings, significant deficiency or material weaknesses. Um, and there were no non-compliances noted. Uh, moving on to federal awards. Again, we had an unmodified opinion and no findings were noted and no material non-compliances were noted either. Uh, the program, the federal program that we audited this year was special education. Um, and lastly, the state award. Uh, the opinion was again unmodified except for these two programs, middle early college and unduplicated pupil count. Hmm. Any questions on the district audit? I just have a quick, simple question initially, mm -hmm. and that is, what's the difference between none reported and no? None reported sounds like 
There may be some, they just weren't reported. Yeah. <laughs> well, because audit is not really a certainty. It's ah. a reasonable assurance. Ah. So for significant differentiate, according to the audit guide, we are supposed to say non-reported. We cannot say <coughs> no. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And it applies the same with the financial statement as well. Okay. Um, we were at CSBA mm -hmm. last uh, Friday, so I know that a lot of us didn't get this report until probably mm -hmm. Saturday because it was mm -hmm. sent to our homes. What's the impact if we table this vote? Because I did find quite a few things that I'd like to ask questions on, but it would be, um, I'd like to review further, and that was just on my, you know, my three hours that I spent oh, absolutely. on it. Uh, I will leave my, num my information <laughs> with Jeff, mine yeah. or even the audit partner, and you can reach out to us directly if you need to. Okay. So, great. So, what so, are we, so, <laughs> so, so, so what's the vote? impact oh. if we table this vote? Can oh, we, to the can next we, meeting. Can, yeah. We don't want to table. Can, can we postpone, or yeah. do we have to vote? Has to be done by the end of the <clears throat> yeah, you have to accept this by December 15th, I believe. Is that right? Uh, oh. No? No, we just have to issue the report by 15th. Oh, you have to issue the report, we but they. Do the re uh, board meetings in January. Oh, okay, well, so we can. Go. So we receive them by, right. from you by December fifteenth, mm -hmm. but then we have until the January to board go meeting. over it. Because I, t I mean, I ended up spending half a day, you know, because I know we have to go through the numbers. <laughs> yes, definitely. And I actually like it, so you know. But <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> a lot of good news. So uh, right here, are your item is to accept the financial audit report. I don't think that closes it out. Is that correct? Well, as in we're receiving it. I, I mean, yeah, you're receiving it. it. We're well, receiving it. We can't. Yeah, we're we can ask questions. Oh, yeah. Accepting, yeah, absolutely. It? Yeah. Okay. But I'm I'm confused. I think receiving is different than accepting. Right. Receiving means accepting means we've read it and think it's great. And receiving it means you just gave it to us. So I believe we should receive it if you want to postpone it. I think and if we can get it on the, the next day. January do, uh, meeting. Do we need to make a motion then to amend um, it's wait, wait. It's on 17A? The, it's on the agenda mm -hmm. to, um, on the, under action items. So if you want to change the words, and can we just make sure, can, can you get a hold of our attorney to make sure that we are in compliance and that we can accept and not vote on it and and have conversation about it. I mean, well, we're not, I under, a I we're not under a fiscal, I, I don't think, want to get in, in, in trouble with the state. I, I think what this <clears throat> means, that just because you accept it doesn't mean you don't have questions. Well, the report says accept, but for discussion action, it says approve. So approve we're the currently accepting information. We're, accept, we're accepting the report, but for discussion action, it says approve. So I guess the question is, can we submit it by the deadline without approving it? Do we submit it? So it's already been issued. That means it's already been submitted to the state controller, CDE. Oh, okay. oh it has. So it has been submitted, yes. Okay. So we can, wow. we can, but we can postpone um, and bring our auditor back on in January? Sure. We, we can. For a question? What's the date? Uh, what's the date? Fifteenth, <laughs> fourteenth, fourteenth, January fourteenth. I think is our next board meeting. Yes. Okay. I, I do want to make sure that you are understanding that this is a report that you're accepting. A report. Mm -hmm. You're not taking action on any item. Right. Right. So you can accept the report. And you can still have them come back for questions. Because they're clarified. not going to change anything Correct. because this is their, their findings. Yes, exactly. yes. So regardless of whether we are concerned about something, then that would be with Mr. Trader saying, hey, how come they said this and what can mm -hmm. we do with that? So I don't <laughs> see. <laughs> He's like, oh, and, often, Yay, and, right? and, and we've done this in the past yeah. as mm -hmm. uh, um, Mrs. Snell and uh, Ms. Matoy will tell you that mm -hmm. often it's better to sit with the with the uh, auditors in a small group and ask the questions rather than a large group because you get the personal one-on-one -on -one explanations. That's, so that's true. And that's what we did when uh, Mrs. Snell and Ms. Matoye were new. That's right, we yeah. did. And so I would recommend that we do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You accept okay. the report, that doesn't mean you can't ask us to do different things 
in in afterwards. Okay. So what I recommend is accept the report. Mm -hmm. We schedule a time for Mrs. Barto and anyone else who wants to sit mm -hmm. with the auditor mm -hmm. in a small group, mm -hmm. and then we can come back in January. We can we can agendize it in January if there are if uh, directives from yeah. the board that direction from the board that you want us to make I regarding like financials. I like that. Okay. Okay. That's so. Um, do we have a motion to? Oh, you're going to report. Report. Yeah, um, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> so there's another report, the Measure F, the bond oh, report. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. Go yeah. Over that no, as well. Yeah, the Measure F one. So in this report, we audit your uh, Fund 21, which is Measure F expenditures, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, let me make it a little larger. So this year, there was not as much activity as previous years. Mm -hmm. We still audited 98.9% .9 of the expenditures, and I'm happy to report that none of the expenditures were out of compliance <coughs> with water approved language. So our opinion was unmodified. So, so we did good on everything. Yes. <laughs> Except those two little findings that we always mess up. Okay. Any questions on this measure F? So, do we need a motion? I move that we accept the report. Yes, I, item 17 is accept the re financial audit report. And I, I move that we accept the financial report for the fiscal year 2018 19. Second. 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 Mrs. Yelsey. Mrs. Yelsey. Okay, so Mrs. Uh, Metoye uh, made the motion and Mrs. Yelsey seconded it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. And we will wait to the meetings and to, to determine whether uh, the board members would like to have it on the next agenda, on the next um, okay. me meeting agenda, okay? okay. So uh, is there, in, who would like, just so I could know right now, is, who would like a meeting with the auditor? Okay, so Mrs. Black, Mrs. Bartow, Ms. Anderson. Mm -hmm. And we will arrange that for you, okay? Thank you. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. That's Thank you. Okay, moving on to informal reports, Dr. Navarro. Well, you kind of stole my thunder, Mrs. Uh, Fleur. Uh, I would like to report that I have been to the last couple of playoff games for CDM. And uh, I want to tell you that uh, it's an incredible group of young men. I didn't get many games in this season. I was working on a home project, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have been able to get to more playoff games than I ever have. And uh, I'm really impressed by the composure of these young men. Uh, last game was a very, very difficult game. Mm -hmm. It was what I would call a sloppy game, uh, mm -hmm. uncharacteristic of Newport Harbor, I mean of, of Corona Del Mar, to lose the ball on several fumbles, uh, especially right at the goal line. But it didn't matter. These boys did not lose, these, boys, these young men did not lose their composure. Mm -hmm. And they fought and fought and fought until they put themselves in a position to win. And they won the game on defense. Right. They stopped their fabulous running back on the half yard line from scoring wow. with about 30 seconds left in the game. So I just want my hats off. I got to go to the Newport Harbor uh, playoff game as well. That was exciting. Uh, I did go to Mission Hills to watch CDM and it's been a really great playoff season. So that's, that's the fun part of my job when I get to go and see our students in action. Uh, but again, uh, kudos to the coaches, but more than that, kudos to the young men who uh, kept their composure and under difficult circumstances still came out on top. And for you, it's a long drive. For me, Cerritos is 15 minutes from my house. <laughs> so it'll be a short drive for me. <laughs> but I'm uh, looking forward to going on, on Saturday at four o'clock and uh, let's see how they do. They might walk away with a state championship. Okay. Well, good evening, President Floor, Vice President Yelsey. And it's, it's wonderful to see a new perspective for me from sitting at this spot, I just see now different faces because there's always the angle that I'm at. So congratulations to you. Uh, I do want to share that uh, as you heard Phil talking about systems from his perspective, um, just a little snapshot of what we're looking at. Uh, in human resources, we are always looking at improving our systems. They're very complex. They usually um, connect with many other departments and so we have to make ensure that when we do make changes that we're making um, involving everybody uh, that may be touching that system and the most recent one that we were completing you might recall a couple years ago we moved to in, a, in this 
of reporting absences for certificated to ASOP, which, by the way, now is called Frontline. So if you hear Frontline, it is the same as ASOP. Not to be confused with the dog we yeah, that's that's gotcha. had thinking, flea medication. It's just uh, interesting, <laughs> but it, it's the same. So if you hear it in our world, mm. it's talking referring to the same system. So when we implemented it, we started with a few of our classified positions. Then we also used it for our cert teachers, our certificated staff. We have now expanded that out to ensure that our service providers, our counselors, our S SLPs, our psychs. Um, our social workers and our nurses are also using it to report absence and it's really been helpful in the communication particularly if you are at two or three sites then there is one vehicle to communicate and um, it kind of anchors where our attendance is so it's been really really helpful so um, Megan Brown and um, our admin director <coughs> one of certificated personnel and Kimberly Morgan our HR tech were on the um, on the staff development professional development circuit, so to speak, to go out and ensure that all of our folks are now trained on it and are using that. So it's just another. It may sound like, oh well, it's the big deal. It's a it's a big shift for people, but um, extremely helpful on many fronts. And then I also want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to attend with you as part of the governance team to the CSBA conference. Uh, yes, I too am exhausted, which I'm here, we're going to, I think that's going to be the theme. Um, but to, to be with you and sit in sessions with you so that it just brings a different perspective. I can sit in something and hear it from, an, uh, from a practitioner perspective, but to hear it from a board member external um, side, it's really helpful. It reminds us of to always be multi, keeping in mind multiple perspectives. I did attend many sessions with you, and so I'm not going to steal your thunder. <laughs> um, but I did also, because of who I am and what I do, um, did attend sessions on negotiations and hear what's going on throughout the state, uh, which was really helpful and interesting to me. Um, so the highlight is really sitting with all of you, being part of the conversation, and being a little outside of the area that I'm in given most people who know my background, it is the curriculum and the instruction, and that is why I do what I do. So it's really good to hear about that part every now and then. So thank you very much for that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as my update uh, this evening, I'd like to uh, let you know that uh, we, we've reached a nice milestone today, something that uh, we've been working on for a while, and that is a little project of upgrading the marquees at many of our elementary schools. Uh, so uh, Mr. Bidnick uh, informed me that in fact the contractor did uh, install the first of the eight marquees that, um, uh, that we're installing to replace the old ones. These are now uh, uh, full color uh, video marquees versus the old uh, type where you put up the plastic letters mm -hmm. and those types of things. So. It's been nice to see that project moving along and upgrading uh, this particular portion of our elementary schools for our communities and for them. Do we get to know which schools get them this you, year? You sure do. Give me one second. You knew we'd ask. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. And so I had Mr. Bidnick, even though he's sitting right back there, text me the list oh, of schools. <laughs> so I will go right back to it. He's and when are you doing Adams? But <laughs> Wait, it might be next. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's next year. So, uh, Mr. Bidnick, why, there it is. California, <laughs> Davis, East Bluff, Killybrook, Sonora, Ray, Whittier, and College Park are the ones that are, are currently. Do, do, I got um, stuck on East Bluff. Will you? Being sure. sure. California, mm -hmm. Davis, mm -hmm. East Bluff, Killybrook, Sonora, Ray, Whittier, and College Park. And uh, we're scheduled for next oh year God. for Adams, Newport L, Pomona, Lincoln, Back Bay, Monta Vista, and Early College. Did you say Adams? Yes, she did. Yes, okay, did. I'm sorry. Yes, for next year. <laughs> Thank you. So um, you don't have I to write them down. We'll ask uh, okay. Mr. Holcomb to send that list to you. I actually have a question uh, that has come up. It's actually, actually an argument in my family. Uh, mm -hmm. Do are, do the marquees, are they turned off at night? 
because it doesn't matter if you're a Estancia, but if you're in a neighborhood, um, it kind of matters because it's, you know, obnoxious to have the red letters scrolling. Are they, t is there a policy or is there a procedure about turning them off at night? Uh -huh. That's been managed at each one of the school sites in the past. It's mm. definitely something that we can look into uh, at our schools. One of the things that we've tried to do uh, as mm -hmm. we've done this is to look at the locations Absolutely. Uh, of the marquees to try to not make them um, shine directly into windows, but um, we can look into that issue of what time they go on and what time they go off. Because there, there is computer capability. I talked to the principal at mm -hmm. Paul Reno who had mm -hmm. like the test run, mm -hmm. and she said that she has the, the school has the capability of putting in when it starts and when it stops. Yeah, because um, I know T-Winkle is, uh, is annoying it's because there's people yeah. across the street, mm -hmm. and well, and I agree with you, it's location. I mean, it's a great advertisement if you're not next to a neighborhood to have Estancia going all the time and stuff. But So so we will do some uh, checking with the sites to see great. what types of policies yeah. they've been doing and yeah. uh, get some information together and, and that we can come back and talk about it. Okay. And remember, so I was actually the principal when they put the T-Winkle one I in. Know. <laughs> and those neighbors on the corner complained at night because that red light flashed. Yeah. And we found out we had the ability to be able to turn down the brightness of those ah. at night. So we communicated with them. We turned oh, it down to a level that was acceptable for them. So I know at the one at T-Winkle, anyway, we were able to oh, turn good. down that brightness to make it acceptable to the neighbors. So uh, okay. that's Okay, well, it still too. irritates my husband. We don't live there, but... <laughs> Me drives by. <laughs> it's like that's ridiculous. <laughs> okay. All right, Mr. Trigger. So. <clears throat> mm -hmm. so going from the bright lights of, of <laughs> signs and to the dark, dark back room <laughs> of the back office. Um, today we had a meeting with OCDE. They are our service provider uh, for uh, many of our back office systems, accounting, and. Uh, requisitions and HR and those kinds of things. And uh, we had a nice chat with them about the kinds of uh, things they could offer us and um, we're, we're fairly encouraged by some of their offerings that they have and so we hope to uh, keep you updated on that as we make some progress. <coughs> Jeff, do you have any insights into the status of the o OCDE budget? And uh, <laughs> the... They've got a they've got a team coming in to because we don't have an adopted bud they don't have an adopted budget. Yes, they're mm -hmm. they're having a a, pro a challenge with that, and uh, I have uh, I t I just spoke to um, one of their folks um, last week and and their it still has not been approved. So as we've talked about systems in a couple different areas tonight, Dr. Navarro met with Dr. Sir and myself last week and asked us to come up with a system to check our school websites to make sure that they had current information. And so we met with Annette and Adriana and came up mm -hmm. and already communicated to the principals that the public information office will be sending out calendar invites to each of the school's web webmasters to focus an hour each month for updating their website content. And we were thinking like the last Thursday or Friday of the month to have the new month's uh, content ready to go up. And while we understand that not all the, the webmasters will be available during that time, it will serve as a reminder for them to get their content uh, updated. Um, and also the public information office is available to them really at any time, but they know at that one hour each week that they will be there specifically to help them in those areas. The information that we are asking them to keep current are their staff lists, their bell schedules, their principal's messages, which really should be done at the start of the year and then mm -hmm. should be done for the rest of the year. And then uh, each month they should be updating their calendars and their news feeds. And so my office will be responsible for monitoring the secondary sites and Dr. Sir's office will be responsible to monitor the elementary sites to make sure that their information is current. Could they also make sure for the community page, that's one of the ones that I hear from parents often. There's sometimes PTA information, there's sometimes not. I think mm -hmm. that the community page is often a place that the parents look to first when they're trying to get information. So if any 
anyone serving that school, if it all can be in one place that would and updated, that would be amazing. We will add that. Yeah. I, I was going to say a similar thing. I, I, in the past with PTA, um, the officers don't tend to change. I mean, they do change, but the website doesn't change, and that results in a lot of confusion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, I'd like to uh, share a couple of safety uh, oh. meetings and sessions <laughs> that I went to last week. Um, the first one was a uh, regular meeting that uh, the county actually sponsors. Our, our, our county office of uh, education offers a safety meeting for school districts up at Loma Ridge, which is the Orange County Emergency Operations Center. It's a great facility up there. and. Um, at, on that agenda, there were a couple of things that really I thought were of great interest to us here in Newport Mesa and other districts. And one of them is just a, a school district sharing about their lockdown experience and lessons learned. And, uh, and we've had our share. We've had our share. But it's great to hear from another district to get some perspective, whether you pick up some kind of nugget that's, uh, oh, that's a great idea, or you kind of validate the work that you're doing at your own district. And that's what I kind of came away with, that you know what, we figured out that problem, and we figured out that problem, we figured out that problem. So even though it was another district and they are, they're learning, I, it gave me some great perspective on the work that we're doing here. The other thing that was on that agenda was OKIAC, which is the Orange County uh, Intelligence Assessment Center. And uh, without going into great detail, these are folks that are, it's a multi-agency um, group where they work with FBI, Homeland Security, local law enforcement. And when there is a threat to a school, these folks are critical players to help all these agencies communicate and share information. And to hear from the deputy director of that group and be able to ask questions was really valuable. <laughs> and uh, they work f with uh, school districts and cities and other agencies. And we need to be very proud of our county, of Orange County, uh, that we have agencies not only like this, but that are, are very high functioning. So that was very comforting. And then the other thing I want to share, and some of you were there with me at the uh, school board's uh, conference last week. There was a, an excellent session. Uh, it was called uh, Coping with Natural disasters. And the panel was members from Butte County as well as Sonoma County, who mm -hmm. unfortunately are victims of these uh, massive wildfires. And to hear their stories and lessons learned uh, was amazing. And, you know, things that you would never think about they had to deal with, uh, such as uh, how, do you, how do you house students and families who have lost their homes? Uh, working with the government and, and having relief when the government is pointing fingers at each other. And so th through their experiences, they, they believe and, and they have achieved uh, a, a lot of lessons learned. Things that didn't exist two years ago, now we're in a much better place. Uh, things like how do you handle all the donations that come, that flood into the district. That was a major undertaking. So I have two pages of notes wow. that uh, they shared with us in that session. But cash, you might as well oh, mention oh, yeah, cash, cash is king. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's what they need. Yeah. yeah, they were saying gift cards. Mm -hmm. Gift cards. In that oh, sense, sure. it was gift cards. So anyways, but it's to give to families and, and uh, community yeah. members. So anyways, it, it was uh, very insightful. And the phrase they're using, I'll leave this with you, which I thought was, was really great. Even though it was very difficult for them to be up there and talking about these experiences, they really strongly believe that victims need to help other potential victims. And, and just the sharing between Sonoma to Butte County and then for them to be sharing with all of us so that we can be better prepared in the event that something happens. Thank you. Okay, moving on to consent calendar. Is there a motion? Just just <laughs> Mrs. Black has to read. Oh. No, there's no, there's no cards. You don't have to. Okay. Okay. So that's right I there. move to approve the consent calendar. Second. Second. Okay, so it was moved by Mrs. Snell. It's hard, Seconded isn't it? It's hard to do that. Mrs. <laughs> it is hard. We tied. Kelsey. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
motion oh, carried. I, I put my I had just uh, oh sorry yes um could I ask a couple questions about um sure. sorry about that uh ensign uh, which one which number which number um, let's see 1984 1985 mm -hmm. and these are just uh these are just general questions do we have a we talked about in the past getting a sign in front of the school with updated is this related to that or is this just part mm -hmm. of the process or part of the you know getting ready to do that Tim yes yeah, so um, these this is for the project uh, when the construction contract is awarded for both the uh, material inspection and for the DSA inspection um, we do not have plans right now to put a sign in front of the school I had not received uh, either the, the consensus of the board or direction from the superintendent to put a sign up in front of the school, so we don't have that on our agenda at the moment. Uh, well, well, let's uh, put that on our agenda. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. You know, coming soon to a school near you. Yeah. And, and that was new and improved. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, um, and then um, just if you maybe have Wild West Inspection amend their contract, there's a pretty significant typo uh, regarding the dates. We will fix that. And Mrs. Barto, I mean Mrs. Anderson. Um, I have a question about 19A6 um, for the athletic training support services. I noticed that um, Costa Mesa High School was not on there. Do they use a different mm -hmm. service? Mm -hmm. Well, just so, just so you know, uh, this is a transition year, and uh, we've already given direction uh, that all schools will be needing to be under our uh, agreement with, uh, with uh, NOFI, uh, NOI, NOI. <laughs> um, because uh, under this pro program, uh, not only do, does HOG provide uh, the trainers, the athletic trainers, they also provide a video uh, diagnosis, diagnosis on the spot by the physicians in the in the practice, so uh, we aren't relying on a diagnosis by someone trained to tape and treat injuries. We're relying on a physician giving professional uh, recommendations and diagnoses on an injury, and it's been proven to be very very helpful. We've had several collarbones that were thought to be just shoulder injuries mm -hmm. diagnosed as broken bones, and the uh, student being sent to the hospital. Uh, so uh, we are uh, making sure that schools know that next year there is no, mm -hmm. there no one gets to opt out. Um, it's not only better for our students, mm -hmm. it's uh, also a measure of liability because we are doing what we need to do to protect our students' health. Mm -hmm. But currently, My question was about Costa, Costa, Mesa. Costa Mesa. Yes, well, why, uh, they, they had the this in this transition year. They had a trainer that they wanted to keep, and the trainer was offered an opportunity to work with uh, the the work for this group and uh, he chose not to so we gave them this year to uh, opt out but next year they don't have that choice Okay. and then I also was wondering too I, I know sometimes for contracts it's advantageous to connect them but I think I mean one of the things that I see like Colonel Domar the fence is a very different conversation than the conversation at Ensign and so whenever Thanks. possible like is there a way for us to like separate individual items and have them individually, or do we are we just doing that for ease of use for one company? Yeah, not ease of use for one company, but for the ability to get better pricing and a better quality contract. <laughs> Is so okay. That was my. So yeah, that's that the reason why they are combined as one project. Okay. Is is with the intent to encourage larger contractors. Uh, to bid on the project and to give us better pricing for both projects. Thank you. A two for. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes it makes a difference, but I think it didn't work for either of those. Okay, seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Moving on to discussion action mm -hmm. item. Uh, Mr. Trader. Uh, 
Well, I have to tell you, I'm a little giddy uh, <laughs> because um, I can't wait to really um, brag to my counterparts to tell them what my board did to throw off a, a, an audit report because <laughs> they want to delve into it and do a deep dive. I'm, I'm really, that's, that's absolutely wonderful. I'm just gobsmacked. I'm, it's absolutely terrific. So uh, that's amazing. <laughs> Hopefully tonight we'll get a meet standard from Mrs. Snell yes. for, the, for our interim report. So let's talk about interim reports and what they are. And so they're required by law and they include budget revisions between the adopted budget and the first interim, which happens to be between July and October 31st. And it accounts for that activity and it includes multi-year forecasts, um, which we update for the next two years. And it certifies your ability to meet our uh, financial obligations for the next two years. So um, from that report, uh, <clears throat> we have a cycle that we, we roll through. And so you're familiar with, we have the state adoption in July. We do our unaudited actuals report in September. We're here now in December for our first interim. The governor will uh, produce his budget proposal in January. We'll come to you with a second interim in March and then uh, and a budget adoption in June. And so that's the fund calendar. So now let's talk a little bit about the uh, proposed budget revisions. So um, what this means is we're, we're updating our assumptions in light of changes uh, and new information that we have received. And so with that then, let's talk a little bit about revenue. So unrestricted revenue increased by uh, $9.4 million. And that is primarily because of uh, higher tax revenue, and that's a good thing. Um, ta property tax increased 5.9 million, and we had a reduction of in lieu property tax of 1.4 million, and that's a result of the um, Isaac Charter School, and we had to go with the the numbers that they the inflated numbers that they provided us at the beginning. Um, and as, as you know, they went from like 250 down to 71. So um, that is, is good for the district's budget in that regard. And then uh, uh, special education preschool intervention grant, that's worth 1.9 million. And that came in at the very tail end uh, of the year. And so we didn't have um, enough time to put that into the budget So uh, when we adopted in June. And then uh, you look at uh, increased uh, Restricted revenue, and that's mostly because of, of community support. Um, we had uh, community support of three and a half million. Very generous community in, in supporting the district's programs, uh, field trips, all those kinds of things. And then about uh, 700,000 in federal programs, and uh, we also included the Career Pathways Grant of another 700,000. So uh, overall, when you look at that, um, looks like it's nice up and to the right, which yeah. is what we like to see at this time of year. And so then let's talk about our expense. <clears throat> expense is um, also increasing. So unrestricted <coughs> expense increased by about 2.3 million. That's higher with staffing about uh, 1.3 million and non-staffing again by 1.3 million. And the staffing is impacted mostly by certificated salaries. They increased by 1.4 million. Classified salaries decreased by 0.9 million. And benefits increased by 0.8. That's a total of about 1.26% of our budget, which is what we normally experience at this time of year because we do uh, between June and, and um, uh, the, now we do a lot of cleanup, and so um, you'll, this is kind of a normal pattern for us in this regard. And then for the restricted expense, that went up uh, 10 million, 10.1 million. And again, that is, um, that's reflective of all of the beginning fund balances loading um, that we now know at this time. And so staffing increased 3.4 million and non-staffing by 6.8 million. And again, um, well, this is up and to the right, but it's <coughs> it's matching uh, revenue, so that's helpful. Oh, we want this one to go down. <laughs> down. In a perfect world. In a perfect, In a perfect world. world, yes. And then uh, uh, for other financing uses, our transfers out to nutrition services increased by 0.9 million, 
and then we increased our uh, support for workers for the workers compensation fund by 1 million and then we also in increased our support for restricted programs which um, include special ed major maintenance and LCFF supplementary and um, so you see there and this is a pretty normal pattern for us to follow at this time of year. Ending fund balance, uh, the unrestricted ending fund balance increased by 1.8 million, and that's good because we need to do that. As you'll remember, uh, uh, last year and the year before, we reduced our ending fund balance um, to make sure that we could fulfill your commitment to um, air condition the school sites. And, and so it's time now for us to to replace that ending fund balance that we used. And then uh, restricted ending fund balance increased by uh, 1.8 million. Now let's take a look here. Um, we are a community funded district. And so what's driving this is uh, property tax. So if you look here, there's our total line. And here's our LCFF line. And then federal, pretty flat, state, coming down and local is is uh, consistent um, those out years were probably a little bit more conservative but you would uh, we would expect to see that line um, in the out years come up a little bit on the local and so federal and local revenues are flat state revenue is declining and let's take a look then at the multi-year <laughs> and one thing you remember there's only one thing certain about a budget and it will be wrong <laughs> but we do need to be in the ballpark. So um, let's take a look and see what we have here for the multi-year. So I remember we, sh we showed this last time um, <coughs> and, and we don't wanna, I don't wanna be the boy that's crying, the sky's falling, sky's falling. But, but there, things are really good right now. We have to admit, <laughs> uh, in terms of revenue, those kinds of things are good. Um, but uh, what we need to remember is that periods of high economic growth often sow the seeds of their own demise. It just is what it is. And, and so during these good times, we need to be cognizant of perhaps uh, what we should be doing. And so when we look at the state physical health index, so we're gonna superimpose that. So <laughs> I hope this is not so sublimable, but I'm hoping you, you, you see the dark background in the back against this state fiscal index, which is telling us that, wow, things are really good. Things are wonderful right now. Um, this is an index that was produced by the um, uh, legislat Legislative Analyst Office. Mm. And it is a uh, market basket of key indicators that the state believes uh, will kind of forecast the future. And it includes things um, like housing, um, uh, <clears throat> home building, commercial building, the S&P 500, venture capital activity, unemployment claims, CalFresh claims, port traffic, and new car sales. And it's really high right now. It doesn't get much better. <laughs> so um, things, times are good. And so this is a good time to do those things as you've given us direction to look to the future to make sure the district is in a position to be able to handle perhaps uh, slower revenue growth um, environment. So let's then take a look then at our multi-year. So here's how things look. Um, in 1718, unaudited actuals. Um, in 1819, again, unaudited actuals. Those are actuals. And then going into the out years here, which are budget. And that's a nice line. If you look at that revenue line, it's, it's up and to the right. It's, um, it's growing, and it's growing at a fairly good clip. And, and that's wonderful until we, we look at uh, the expense line. <laughs> and you can see we struggle. We're struggling a little bit to, to keep those lines uh, uh, separated in, in a good way. Um, so you can see there, 17, 18, we had higher expenses than uh, revenue. Um, we corrected that in 1819, but now we're looking at, you know, trying to really keep those lines uh, apart. And, and uh, that's, um, that just is an indication that um, you have the pedal to the metal. And that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. It just means we're, we're, we need to be thoughtful about uh, what we're doing and make sure that, that um, uh, we're planning appropriately. 
because we are, um, you have a number of programs and initiatives that um, come with, um, you know, uh, unspeakable uh, expense. <laughs> <laughs> um, so multiple curriculum adoptions, air conditioning, site uh, safety, security enhancements, and meeting social and emotional needs. We can't go walking, Mrs. Floor. Yeah, so Stop that's walking. Yeah, that's what <laughs> telling us. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't cook. Don't spend yes. the money. No more walking. <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting. You know, and and as you know, as you walk, um, you've heard this before. Uh, you can do anything you want. You just can't do everything. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So, um, anyway, so let's sleep. It eats. Yeah. Yeah. So pensions remain a concern. Uh, we look at the Calister's employers uh, employer rate. <clears throat> that's um, that's going. However, though, luckily, uh, uh, in a good way, it's going to moderate <laughs> here in in twenty one twenty two. That's helpful. And then uh, Calpers though shows no sign of of moderating at all in this uh, in this time period. It continues to drive up, and it's a concern that we have in trying to meet. Uh, that cost because that is those increases are, are it's like adding one two percent to the salary schedule every year that's that's tough to keep up with does the minimum wage also affect this too the CalPERS rate? minimum wage is uh, uh, for for most of the positions that, um, that are minimum <coughs> wage here um, usually don't aren't covered by PERS so th those are probably uh, um, our alternative retirement system that we have there. And so any fund balance, um, if we take a look at any fund balance, we, you have a reserve of 4.5%. That's the standard that you have set, and that currently has $15.4 million in it. And then you have a stabilization reserve, and this is used to absorb shocks or uh, protect your board-directed priorities of $19.2 million. And just to kind of keep give you a picture of of kind of where we're at, uh, average unifieds in in the state. If you take the average unified in the state, they have reserves of sixteen point six four percent. And the Government Finance Officers Association recommends reserves at a minimum of seventeen percent. And uh, we are at about uh, nine or ten percent right now. Ooh. So um, we have a little bit of work to do, and we've made some progress in, in this year, and, and, but we have some work to do in the out years, and, and this is where we're going to spend some time trying to figure out how we can um, make that line um, do what we need it to do. And so we're going to do that, and uh, it, will, it will behave. <laughs> um, so closing thoughts. Uh, economic factors are flagging future slower growth. Um, expenditures are increasing dramatic, dramatically. The district is stretching to meet your priorities, um, and that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. Uh, you keep cracking the whip. We'll we'll keep making uh, making it happen. Um, the district must financially position itself to tackle OPEB liability and endure future slower growth uh, revenue environments. And so, with that, then um, we recommend a positive certification. And uh, I want to thank, uh, there's an awful lot of work that goes into these things, and so I want to thank uh, the professionals and on your staff. Um, I really feel this way, kind of the John Wayne, uh, you know, he said when people you work with do their job to make things right and still have time to smile and get along with others, I want them around. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I feel like here. So thank oh, you so much great. for your time. If there's any questions, yeah. I'd be happy to answer, answer them. You cleared the room. Oh, yeah. yes. Turn around. <laughs> well, I just need a meat standard. So. That's right. <laughs> and Dr. D'Alexino was busy signing. Oh, was he? All right. Well, I, I will plan. You'll have to sit through this again then. Start again. Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Barto. Um, two questions. What? I'm just kidding. I was going to tease you about it. Can we table this to January? I'm not. Uh, <laughs> um, with the. I was wondering if you'd seen the UCLA and the Chapman um, financial forecast. They were more positive than things that we'd seen in the past. Not that I don't think we should be conservative, of course, but I wondered if you'd seen those. They predicted better growth than expected for next year. They have, and, and that's something that has changed. You know, and, and last year this time it was a little bit more gloomy, but the latest 
things that are coming out from Chapman and from UCLA are a little bit more rosy. You're right. Yeah. Yes. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and then the other thing was from reading through the um, audit and things like that, the reserves is a lot of times related to the surrounding property value. Is that correct? So that that's why we are it's the that's somehow tied to um, the amount that we have in reserves. Is that am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. So that's a really good point you bring up because um, because of our funding, uh, most of our funding comes from uh, property tax, and so if uh, we have a uh, a declining property value um, environment. We can, um, you know, we, we live above what the state says we should have. So the state says we should have this amount, but we have really this amount. And so we could go into a free fall until we hit the, the state amount that we're supposed to get, that they say. So, so in that regard, yes, we, we need to have, we have a less of a safety net than, say, a LCFF district. Mm -hmm. Being basic aid, there's not that safety net there for us. And so that's why it's prudent to have... Uh, a higher reserve than perhaps a LCFF district. Thanks. We have a comment from Dr. Dowdy. Good evening again. Uh, so first comment is that I would hope that um, the PowerPoint in this presentation as well as one that, we, that was earlier before closed session that all of the PowerPoints can get posted with the minutes online at some point down the road. That's very helpful. Um, and secondly, uh, the report uh, in the PDF version of it, it showed that there were positive changes in the ending fund balance. And so my understanding is that when we finish with an ending fund balance that is uh, larger than expected, uh, that the staff is able to then roll it over into the next budget cycle. Uh, but my question is, and I've kind of asked this before, is how does the board provide guidance for the use of those funds? Uh, what, are, what are the priorities that, that they should use based on construction projects or personnel or things for students? Um, you know, when you have this extra money than you plan for, what's the guidance in using that? Thirdly, um, is related to the reserves that we just that we just had a question about. So, uh, one of Mr. Trader's slides shows that there should be that there's a state recommendation. And we're trying to be above that recommendation. So, do we have a, a goal for Newport Mesa, either a dollar goal or a percentage goal? Um, one of the economic forecasts shows that you're having to dip into that uh, to finish out some construction projects. So, what's the plan to kind of reestablish and get there over time? What's the speed to get there? Some of those big picture goals that the board might have, um, and I asked, I've asked these questions previously, and Dr. Navarro was gracious enough to provide me some written feedback on this, but these are some questions that I've gotten from some other community uh, folks, and I thought you might be able to speak to it at this time, or perhaps at a future meeting uh, down the road. I, I did respond, and I shared that response with the board members. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, Dr. Dowdy's question is, what, what are you going to do with $5.8 million in that are in excess? Uh, $5.8 million is 1.75% of your budget. Okay, And what I explained to him is that there are expenses that come in below expectations and expenses that come in above expectations. And so what we do, and you will approve these transfers at some point throughout the year, or maybe at the end when we do unaudited actuals, but is to fund those expenses that came in higher with that money. So we're on a spend every dollar uh, budget. Uh, that theoretically is what most districts should do because the money you get for this year is for this year's kids. Mm -hmm. And it, we, there are times when we do f spend money on projects uh, and reserves. So for example, uh, the business finance department, the guru over here, mm -hmm. was able to fund all those AC projects by sweeping money on occasion when it was possible. A lot of it came in on one-time money. Some of it came in from uh, leftover, uh, uh, what was it, the uh, redevelopment fund that came in at the end. We got some of that. But some of it did get, did get, did get swept into your priorities. So you have provided us with direction. Uh, we do share with you those transfers and so on. But at 1.75%, uh, that's not a whole lot of money. Uh, if you had three hundred dollars, that'd be a dollar seventy-five that you could do more with. Uh, so um, that's what I explained to to, to Dr. Dowdy. Um, 
And if you do have uh, reserves come in, uh, you have to remember that those are really becoming now one-time funds and that you can plan for the next year to use those in a different way. But what you have left over is only one time and you should use it on a one-time expense. It's an example of that is this year's um, work on the Estancia field, which was unplanned and surprised, but we were able to do what we had to do because the economy is better and we we would have to do it anyway and then have some issues, but we were able to do that. that so that's an example. So it doesn't really become extra money for like four or five years down the road. And by then we've spent it on our walks. Ms. Anderson. Um, I had a question. Has Newport Mesa in the past um, ever had an, a budget oversight committee? Yes. When did that end? 2000, 2001. Because I think a lot of these, particularly since we're a basic aid district, I think maybe going back to that, I think there's a lot of questions in the community about how our budget is operated. So I think that. I know. I can't imagine more public trying to fit in here. <laughs> but it's That's not my comment. My, com no, no, my comment is that that information should be available to the public. And I think to have, like we have for Measure F, I think it's a really valuable thing to have. What? How did the previous budget committee start? How did it end? Can I have a little I history, please? Um, sure. It actually started uh, about 1991, 92. Uh, it started because there were some, a couple of irregularities, and of course then we went into the um, embezzlement. Uh, so the board established a budget advisory committee as well as an audit committee we, and an investment committee. We had three committees uh, comprised of community members. Um, all three uh, were comprised of members representing each zone. Um, they applied. There were strict guidelines, correct? And each board member was able to appoint a member. Um, as we went over time, they sometimes they took into consideration and looked into maintenance and operations was one area that there was um, quite a bit of discussion. Um, ultimately, uh, the demise came because we couldn't recruit enough community members to even meet a quorum. But we also had um, completed Measure A, though, and that was kind of the well, we had, that was a, bond, that, that was that a, was a bond, bond measure, and those were required. But it, it ultimately was because I think Jeff, you that was when you started coming was actually because we couldn't we couldn't get a quorum, and those individuals, the investment advisory committee, was actually um, looking at the investments, on and then we had the audit committee, um, and they were, they were relatively small committees, um, but we couldn't field um, candidates nor could we maintain them. It's the same thing that we're going through right now with our um, citizens oversight committees for the bond mm -hmm. um, because we had very strict guidelines that were passed so we can't, we can't change those of who, what group should be on that committee and so now we're sort of, aren't we, du we're double dipping, we've got a, a you know, a, uh, a senior citizen who happens to be in a taxpayer group, so that took care of two. Actually, fortunately, we were able to get uh, one to meet each one, but it's very, very strict in the law, and it's not easy. And um, just because uh, life is the way it is, um, we don't always get much more than a quorum. So we're, we're always encouraging and reminding the oversight committee members that we need a quorum uh, at every single meeting in order to be able to conduct their business. When so they were up and I running. I have to say they were, I got to serve on it before I was a board member and um, I actually came to the board when I wasn't on the board and recommended that we put one together. But it was, um, it just is so informative and, but I think what happened is once we started breaking out in measure A into the individual school and then the umbrella of Measure A committees and whatnot, people kind of went, okay, so we, you know, and we, we weren't deficit spending anymore. We had six years of deficit spending before, you know, and that we wanted to have the community, well, we were calling to be on it, to understand it. So, so I think it, it is really beneficial, but again, 
you know, people want to come out and um, they would probably come out and listen to Jeff, you know, <laughs> because he has a great way of giving it away. And, and also you get to understand it, you know, so it might be something to investigate, but to just go out, you know, it, it, it would be a lot of work for inconsistent. So, historically, know, yeah, historically in the state, these types of committees come about when there's a crisis. That's it. That and uh, that is part of the way you get over the crisis is you create, uh, you create um, more, uh, more people to look at what you're doing. Uh, you know, they're advisory, so they can't really tell you what to do, but they do sit there and listen, and you do listen to them. But historically, these come about because of some kind of crisis. Um, and, uh, you know, it could be a district that is going to be taken over by the state, for example, or it could be a district that suffers some kind of criminal embezzlement. Uh, those are the main crises. Right now, you have a triple-rated uh, district, uh, and so you're well managed. You're highly respected in the state. Um, so you know, I don't know if this is the right time. And it's a very difficult thing to do to recruit people for long term. Uh, so uh, Measure A did finally, uh, <laughs> you know, kind of fall apart after it was done. And we and Tim's done a good job of maintaining the Measure F oversight because you, legally that's required. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, you know, it's 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 not something that. Uh, you find yourself in, uh, you have extended the district. We have uh, that, those AC projects cost a lot of money. Those those uh, investments in instructional materials, are huge investments. And they're not done yet. And we're not done yet. And we have several more to go. So we have a, we have a hill to climb, uh, but you are well managed. You're, you'll have an opportunity to sit with the auditors if you want and uh, find out just how well managed you are. I, I think also uh, part of it is, is that um, in the past, um, and, I, and Jeff really led the way, is our budgets were not user-friendly either. They were, they were cumbersome. They were, they were just regurgitating exactly what the state, which uh, is like a three-page document and you can't read it at all. And, you, you know, it's just a bunch of numbers and it doesn't say anything. And I think with, with Jeff at the helm, uh, one, it's much more uh, self-explanatory. It's very transparent. You can open up any page and you can see, you know, you can, you can open up a, a, a school, um, which in the past budgets didn't have that. So you can, look up a, you can look up a school and say, oh, that's how many teachers, that's the salary, here's the principal, that's their salary, here's what they're spending, and, there was, and it was a, it's attached to a, a goal or a line item. And that was, um, that was because of it. So I think that the community does have that opportunity. That is published online, I think, actually, so the community can get it. I don't know whether it's translated into Spanish or whether there's any language availability. There's, uh, we, we have talked about doing that. We have not done that yet, but we, you know, that's um, uh, with your leadership, um, we're, we will make that available. Uh, we, you know, we can always improve things and that's what we want to do. Numbers are universal. Yeah. I think um, my, my concern is, I know I'm coming in new, right? This is my one year anniversary of being on the board. Congratulations. Um, oh, by the thank way, you. congratulations. You guys um, survived. survived. <laughs> I just survived. Um, so I know there's still a lot of questions that I have about the budget and trying to get more information and asking for months and months and months for more information. So if me as a board member is asking those questions, I'm sure there's members of the public who are contributing the property yeah. tax to our district and have those questions, even if somebody wanted to have a cursory overview that was a step beyond what we published because there's there's just not enough information in that um, and I think rather than waiting for a crisis to happen as a community funded district it makes a lot of sense for us to stay ahead of that and have even if it's a smallish quorum a smaller quorum than would be needed for a, you know a measure item um, mm -hmm. for me that's something that is like I believe my fiduciary role is to ask those questions so I don't know what that looks like, but I would love like if we can continue to have conversations about that going forward because there's a lot of questions that I still have about our budget and I, I'm thankful that we have this, but there's more, there are some numbers that I want more information on. 
So hopefully, actually, you can um, take advantage of Mr. Trader and, and go on and, and make a, a um, make an appointment and go in and see him. I'm sure your door is always open, correct? Well, I've done that, but I still haven't gotten the information that I need. So that's why I think it would be great to have an oversight team. Ms. McTwain. I haven't gotten any concerns from my community as far as wanting more information. I was curious if any of our other colleagues have gotten that. I think that as a board member, I care more about the budget and I've had to read it, I've asked questions. I, I understand a lot of it because I've had, I had 15 years of experience as a principal to learn parts of it that I didn't have as a board member. But still, we have a different level of need for this information and I believe, at least in my community, that people that have concerns will ask me and when they don't, they're putting their trust in me that I've asked those questions to make sure that the money is being, you know, our fiduciary responsibility to make sure the oversight. Creating a committee that the community itself isn't asking for just doesn't seem like it's something appropriate to do right now. That doesn't mean we can't revisit it later, but that's my opinion. Mrs. Yeltsin? I would agree. I don't get any pushback from this. In fact, when people have questions, they may ask me, but I know they also call Mr. Trader. I mean, mm -hmm. the public calls mm -hmm. Mr. Trader um, with questions, so I don't have any concerns about that. And I would like a m I would like to make a motion that we approve the 2019-21st period interim report of the district's financial status. Is there a so second? second? Okay, Mrs. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, Mrs. Yelsey moved and Mrs. Black seconded. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 20, approve the 2020 CSBA Delegate Assembly nomination of Michelle Bartow. Aye. I move that we approve the 2020 CSBA Delegate Assembly nomination of Michelle Bartow. Second. Second. Great. I think this is a Third. great opportunity for you, Michelle. Um, and Dr. Navarro will send out uh, once we've approved. Dr. Navarro's part of his job is he'll send it out to um, all the other uh, school board presidents. So your board. resume would be a little helpful. Not that I'll use it all, but oh, I sent it to. Oh, you got it. Okay, we've got it. Great, it's great. great. Thank you. Um, um, of note is that because the the whole county is in declining enrollment, um, three there are several districts that are entitled to appointed appointed positions because of their size. Um, Anaheim Union is losing their appointed position because they've dropped mm. in, um, they've dropped below the line. Uh, Saddleback has dropped below um, the, the required, so we've had to do some reapportionment. So there's, there's I, can't remember the third. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember where it is. It may, it may have been, um, nope, I don't Garden Grove sitting out? Uh, maybe no. Capo. Capo. I think maybe it's Capo. Maybe, or, or, or Garden, maybe Garden Grove. Um, so sure there's going to be some interesting it. things, so we'll see. We have to vote. Yes, so uh, who made the motion? I made the motion. I made the motion. And I seconded it. Or oh, no. she seconded it. Thank Mrs. The Matoyer made the motion and Mrs. Mrs. Black, Black seconded, seconded it. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Yay. Okay, moving Congratulations. on to um, board member reports. Hmm. Madam past president. <laughs> to be first now. The problem with going first is that I never know when not to when to stop. Um, yeah, the, the, we'll let you know. The visual and performing <laughs> arts of the world has started and it's wonderful. Uh, Mrs. Floor and I attended Newport since our last board meeting. Mrs. Floor and I attended the Putnam County Spelling Bee at Newport Harbor High School. And Mrs. Great. Snell and I attended ELF at Costa Mesa High School. Both were well represented by the theater groups of their kids. It was really fun. I love nothing more than to see a play for the first time at a high school. So that's really, really fun because then if I ever do see it by professionals, I kind of go, well, I don't know, they did pretty well over at Newport Harbor. I th Costa Mesa did just <laughs> as good. Um, last night I did attend the Sounds of the Season at Costa Mesa High mm. School, which is the instrumental portion 
it's delightful because the way Mrs. Gilbo, their director, presents the program, it starts with beginning strings and beginning band and works their way up to advanced band. And we were able to enjoy the jazz band at our Harbor Council PTA so well, in fact, that it was a jazz band in a small room. <laughs> so we all really, really uh, got to hear the music well. Um, the representation <laughs> at last night was the entire marching band. Oh, wow. So the marching band was on the stage, and they did a couple of their performances from the field work and then went into the holiday music, and that's always fun. And more are coming, so I'll attend as many as I can. And loved that we all got to see CSBA. A couple of, of workshops were fabulous. I, if you get the opportunity to see the video, the movie Life Animated, which mm -hmm. is available on Amazon Prime if you have it, but it is, take Kleenex, it is touching, mm -hmm. and I definitely want to be a sidekick, and I won't say more, so you can get that from there. And Mrs. Snell and I, yesterday, um, were toured Orange Coast College's new building that they have going on. If you've driven by and seen the building on Fairview, that's the student union building and the new, uh, there's two different buildings there. Yeah. There's and a science, there's a. Um, feel free to pop in on this one. Math and science. There's a math and science, there's a, there's a social that's studies, language arts, English building yeah. that's starting. There's also two student union buildings ongoing. Mm -hmm. There's student housing in the back. They're also working on a, um, the pool, they, they, they too are getting a pool, so mm -hmm. we, sh City of Costa Mesa should be well pooled. The biggest pool. Yes, they did say In they the were nation. getting the biggest no. <laughs> pool. Um, they are also revamping a, the sailing facility on the land side of PCH across from the sailing facility they currently mm -hmm. have, and they're building a bridge to go over that. And they, of course, as you know, recently finished the planetarium and the library and if you ever went to Orange Coast College, it's not your old Orange Coast College. It's an amazing facility, and I highly recommend it for the parents of anyone to take advantage of this wonderful state-of-the-art community college before they send, spend the money for four full years of university. And I'll let our other, Aww. I'll let that. Yeah, so they're not, they're not dorms. They got dorms. corrected. They're student housing, because they're like, their apartments yeah. so they're really cute all different configurations so that was very nice of them to give us a tour um estancia high school um so we got rid of the mustang on the field but there's still a mustang on the building are we keeping the mustang on the building i just thought we could talk Put about an it. eagle there y yeah there is an eagle it's on there's a an eagle and yeah I, I'm aware we, we looked at it once upon a time and <laughs> it hadn't been on uh, on the right. agenda of, I, I of know it wasn't things. in the thing. Yeah. I, I yeah, I, I just yeah. Yeah. So. I, I think that we should talk about um, taking it off though. Or putting more bleachers or in. Uh, yeah. Inside. Yeah. We we can look at, at uh, what I think there it's is cheaper it's still, to take out the paint over. It still that. references well, the, the Costa Mesa High Maybe. School at Jim Scott Stadium. We Maybe. can take a look at that, see what okay. we See what would be necessary. Okay. I'm just, I've had some people yeah. contact me, that's all. <laughs> um, uh, Dr. Navarro and I attended the um, early college high school college application uh, event, and it was nice. Um, and they, they, all the students um, uh, gather along the side, and then the seniors come through. And, and then they have like a lunch uh, with the parents and they they can continue to fill out their applications and whatever they need, the FAFSA, whatever they need. So that was kind of, that was very nice. Um, and um, CSBA, I too uh, enjoyed getting to know everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you sure did. Oh boy, you sure did. <laughs> and um, one, of, uh, one of my, um, I went to the legal issues um, workshop with, with Tony DeMarco did it, and that was very interesting. He talked about charter schools and um, and California R Voting Rights Act, which we're, we're very familiar with, um, and um, start time legislation. So that was interesting. Um, 
and I went to the multiple pathways to biliteracy, and that was quite interesting. San Bernardino School District presented on all their different types of programs, and I uh, was interested in that. I liked that there were different different offerings. You don't have to just have an immersion there. And I learned we have a one-way immersion. I didn't know that. I thought we had a bi-immersion, <laughs> but we don't. Um, and then, um, uh, let me see, what was the other thing? Oh, and I don't know, somebody's going to talk about this, uh, that making grades more equitable, mm -hmm. that was really a great presentation. And um, I know that the um, speaker is going to come and speak to our teachers. So it was, I can't just tell you in two sentences. It was, I think we were all really impressed by that. Um, and uh, the Costa Mesa, um, what, what is the, the Costa Mesa community meeting? The meeting that has um, the, the water district, it's not really, the joint, joint district, joint okay. district meeting. Anyway, we were talking to Mary Hornbuckle and the other trustee, which I have name has slipped. Doug Bennett? Is yeah. It? He's not a trustee. Oh. Doug is the, like, um, oh gosh, he, he's a fundraiser. He's a, he, he works. Oh, I thought he was he, a no, trustee. No, he, he's not a trustee. He oh. works for the, he works for Orange Coast College. And then the president, the new president of for Orange Sanchez. Coast College. Yes. yes. And, um they were talking about how they'd love to be involved in that meeting and I it's it would be because they work with the water department sanitation department so I don't know if it's appropriate for us to reach out to the city and suggest we'll reach out to the city. okay that that would be great um, and I want to tell you I appreciated the conversation format um, that we had earlier I thought it it was good because it it wasn't at the level of a real report, so it was shorter and it didn't have as much specific information, but yet it was a heads up, and so yes. I thought that was was good. I, I, I enjoyed that. So It was considerate that you yeah. said this to all the principals, so, oh, hey, we're bringing you on board too, so this is yeah. in a nutshell. Yeah, I mean, that when you nice. have an official report, it's you expect it to be more complete so I I liked the heads up of it so anyway that, that's it thank you um oh Gina <laughs> what happened oh a little fuzzy oh, came um, well I was able to come back on Saturday and attend the um, Wilson holiday party which was awesome it was great to see it was packed in there mm -hmm. um, and then tomorrow morning is the Whittier holiday concert in the morning um, and then oh. I loved going to the workshops that I was able to attend, um, the um, Bioliteracy uh -huh. Pathway, uh -huh. um, talking about, you know, the need across our nation for more students not just to be bilingual, but trilingual and multilingual. Um, and then uh -huh. I went to Implementing Equity, um, and some districts really have some great resources that we can use to um, to implement more equity within our district at all levels, not just grading. Grading is a good start. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, also I attended one about collective impact um, with district and businesses and community partnerships working together hand in hand to, um, they specifically targeted the, um, the high school um, graduation rates. That was the biggest need in their district and so it was cool to see everyone coming together. I've studied Stanford's collective impact models a lot and so it was, it was I loved having a workshop on that at a deeper level. Um, and then I also attended Calm Before Crisis which um, was from a school board member in a different district and it talked about what to do um, in, in the instance if there, you have undocumented students or families in mixed status and if um, someone is deported or gets deportation notices, what the district can do um, because it creates a lot of um, stress on students that are around to the other students. So, um, yeah, I learned a lot. It was great. Thank you. Um, I, my favorite thing at the CSBA conference uh, was probably the session I attended on student board members and ways to make uh, their involvement more meaningful and further involve them in the civic process. Um, there's some really great things that hopefully we can bring back to our district in that area. And then also the grading for equity, equity was really well thought out. Um, 
And then additionally working with um, the teachers in regards to with, you know, the new um, various things that are, you know, there's always new things coming at teachers and helping them um, feel supported and um, with help with their professional development as well. Uh, the way the school district in um, San Juan Unified School District up in Sacramento, uh, it's a very collaborative process and it, it, it seems really well thought out. So something I want to dig more into. Um, I'm looking forward to attending some holiday concerts this week. I'll be at Ensign Strings and then the Newport Harbors, a holiday show as well, uh, mm -hmm. along with Heights. And then, um, should I do my legislation or do you want to do that later? Okay. Um, so a lot of the legislation things that came up, one of them was in the legislative symposium that I attended at CSBA. Um, it was really great to see how well we do on a lot of the things, particularly in regards to uh, the district's uh, attitude towards um, religion and the way that under the law of, um, you know, of the United States that it is to be neutral towards religion but to teach religion. And one thing that I hadn't thought about was how, uh, according to state law, we are required to teach religion both without any bias towards a particular one. So I thought we did a good job in that area as um, a lot of the other school districts have, have really um, a lot of um, understanding that um, they could come to and we were really in compliance with the the spirit of what the California law was so that was encouraging to hear. Um, then regarding some legislation that's coming through from Sacramento in January is uh, AB 272 student smartphone use. Um, this I know is a challenge for many teachers and in, in the classroom and um, the law, this bill effective January 1st will uh, limit the student smartphone use. I know that's kind of from what I hear anecdotally from my children that can be a, a bit of a challenge for, for teachers. So this will limit the uses to IEPs, um, threats, um, you know, use in the classroom for specific things but just giving the ability for students to have it when appropriate and not use it as a distraction for other students. Um, and then the SB 149 willful defiance that's further expanded protecting students K through three from being suspended for um, defiance um, and uh, actions that are you know suspendable offenses that will further pr expand protections for them and then the last one is SB 316 which is student I on student identification cards uh, adding a domestic violence hotline and that will go into effect in October of next year um, when that will be required to be on cards but one thing I found interesting is the law requires that you deplete your supply of ID cards first so right. you, can't, nice. you can't go and print new ones you have to supply what you are exhaust yeah. your supply yeah. Yeah. and then you can print the new ones I thought that was like an interesting like nuance. you can't throw them away uh -uh. don't waste taxpayer money yes. <laughs> that's all thank you Micromanagement. I know, right? We don't do that. Oh. <laughs> um, I too enjoyed the um, conference, and but I, as a delegate, um, I went. We spent a couple years working on full and fair funding, and I mean, a lot of districts, you know, put a, two years, a lot of time and energy into that process, and so CSBA, because of the other. Um, ballot measure that's going to be on the ballot decided to withdraw our full and fair funding. So there was not riots in the streets, but riots in the conference, you know, because they had really worked very hard and they saw this and they wanted to, you know, um, go ahead and put it on the ballot and they felt like it would, you know, win, but it really looked like we would be competing with each other and both would lose. So, um, so there was quite interesting discussion and then also about special education funding you know fair funding for that and um, so we kind of left a little depleted I mean you know and so to go to the conferences and the regular conference was a wonderful and the you know fair grading um, Mrs. Floor had turned me on to the book uh, beforehand so it was really refreshing to have had the opportunity to learn about the author, and um, she shared it with um, uh, Mr. Uh, Lee Sung about it, who's now shared it with staff. But to actually hear him speak 
was really, um, it, there were so many aha moments that I, I stopped trying to write down notes and started videoing <laughs> because it was, you know, things that we've all talked about in this room at some point in their careers or tenure because it is really exciting. So, and then also teary-eyed about the, um, you know, for me, listening to the passion for some of our executives at CSBA that had actually gone through the fire. And, um, and, and just things that you would never think of, like not you know, supporting the children, but being careful not to drive through the neighborhood when you're supporting those students to school. You know, looking at other paths because you don't want to remind them of their school day mm -hmm. of, you know, just little, you know, little things that we would never think of mm -hmm. until you have to, until kids, you know, have an emotional. Um, but there was a lot of that. So, but there was also a lot of positive. And I got to meet with a lot of Orange County school board members and we all got to share what's going on. So I appreciate the opportunity to be able to go. So. And that's it. And look forward to music, music, music. <laughs> Um, Ms. Sparto already talked about the student engagement forum that was put on by Placer uh, School District and Mrs. Flora and, and I also attended and we I think are really excited to try to develop that in our district um, and what they do is they have a, a process and there were four student board members who actually presented at this and they have a process where they apply online so they do a video application and board members select these trustees, and then um, they have a an, an individual um, interview with the school board members afterward, and then they create their own training program, and, it, and they do it in the summer before they come on board, so they're on board starting in September for the year. Uh, they have nine binding vote at, at school board meetings, so they sit there and, and on, most issues except personnel and things like that that they can't vote on. Um, they do have a non-binding vote and they vote first. So we would know how they feel about issues. Um, they also have a student voice council where they meet four times a year, I believe. And it's a video conference, I think at 12 noon at their individual schools. They connect with the superintendent and they have a meeting. They invite other people in their, in their schools to participate. They engage other students. And it sounds like a terrific program and it's something I would really like to see that we push through for next year. So that, um, and the grading was obvious. Uh, great, look forward in January to hearing Feldman speak here. So, so that's, um, that's something to look forward to. And then a couple things, and Mrs. Snell mentioned about the Mustang signage, which brought to mind, <laughs> I've attended um, some of the CDM football games at Davidson this year, and because they have such huge crowds, many of the people s uh, sitting around me at these games have asked why doesn't CDM have signage at Newport Harbor since it is the home field for CDM as mm, well yeah. for football in the ongoing future, that's it. That's where they play football. So it would be nice if we could look into some way, if it's an electronic thing, something that goes up that they can switch it. We can certainly look into it. When the, the project was done, that was discussed significantly, and the answer was no, they did not want to specifically have. But I don't know at that time if they knew they it? wouldn't Newport be Harbor playing football at, their t at, at CDM. Didn't yeah. want it there. Oh, they didn't want it. But they oh. didn't know at that oh. time that oh, they wouldn't they be playing that they would be football oh. at the school. So I think it's something we should just look into. We can look it's been it. brought up to me many yeah. times. Um, and then, yeah, music has begun. I went last Saturday to CDM's vocal, the Polar Express, mm -hmm. and it was more than just a um, vocal performance, a holiday vocal performance. It was actually a play that the students created themselves. Oh. So it was really, uh, you know, kind of a play format, and they did. It was, it was very cool. Sold out Friday. I went Saturday. Friday night, I heard it was sold out. They were turning people away. Wow. They had no more room to put people in. So it was really well attended. Um, I went this morning to Lincoln Show, and they had their orchestra performance, and they haven't been doing it very long. But parents sitting like right next to me were so blown away by how, how well these kids are performing, who some of them have only been doing it for three months. 
and they were really good. I actually have video of some of them that, but it was, they were really amazing. And one parent asked me, do we have this at all the schools? Do we now have an orchestra at all the elementary schools? It's no. not at every no. Diff but different, I know we're for getting, different formats. But we, we're getting closer because. Well, we have band at some, and we have orchestra at others. Okay, they don't, yeah. they, mm -hmm. they, I don't know that anybody doesn't have something. something like that. But I, I, I mean, and that, I said that's something we're really proud of in the district that we've been able to do that because Adams has the, uh, yeah. the high school yeah. music teachers are salivating getting these Me kids too. who have yeah. had some experience in elementary school. Um, and Val did a and, great job at the football game. Doing oh, yeah. That. Every, every, I mean, yeah. I mean, it was you just, listen to it all the time. I, well, I, we walk out across the street, yeah. but, you know. So, um, and there's more music performances to come this week, so that's great. That's it. Terrific. Um, it's interesting to note that both um, the two that I just take away and just were blown away are from the same district, Placer yeah. Union yeah. High School yeah. District, which is up in the Yolo County. Um, but to that end, uh, I think that the important thing about the student board member is that it took it away from a popularity contest. Um, these were not your normal ASB leaders. These were um, individuals that are they apply as either a sophomore or a junior, mm -hmm. um, and then they fulfill their role as a, as a senior. So, and they're trained in Brown Act, they're trained in uh, Robert's Rules, they're trained in, and then they alternate at the board meeting, but they really are providing a student um, voice. Mm -hmm. um, and so to that end, I would like to, um, one of my first acts is I would like to appoint a task force to see whether we can. Um, I know Mrs. Snell has been interested in doing this. She's been talking about it. Um, we've all been talking about it. So I'd like to have um, Mrs. Snell, Mrs. Yelsey, and Mrs. Bartow, um, those three, um, start looking at the possibility of, of putting that together and see. Since we've always talked about, but their, their process no. starts in January, February so that they're appointed, so they have the summer um, before they start. So it would be wonderful if we could do something um, like that. A um, couple of other things is, um, Ashley, you'd be uh, interested to know that CSBA is established some new training modules. They've just rolled them out. It's a $300 subscription, but they're, they're, um, they talked about them in um, Delegate Assembly, and so they're going to be rolling out um, actual training modules that are video. Online training. So video, it's, yeah. it's great on that. Mm -hmm. um, also, I just but, have a couple of questions. But we should, I'm sorry, but we should um, let the district know what we want to go to, oh, yeah. unless you're going to pay for them yourself. Well, they, they're yes. rolling out in January. But I just said so. don't sign up and, and we yeah, can't don't sign, sign up and up expect until them, until yeah. unless we've checked. Yes. But both of you, you both are going to be finishing up. You finished your. Finished. Finished. They both so finished. They both finished. So many masters. Interesting, um, so we didn't have a cake. We didn't. We should get a cake because now we're all <laughs> friends. Um, and then right. I Good. would just like in the future a couple of things. I've gotten a couple of calls about, um, and I know that uh, Dr. Diagostino received a call about from a law firm in regards to suing Jewel and the vaping. Um, situation and so you know just want to do some um, research you all do the research and let us know I know that Dr. Diagostino has had a conversation and he was real clear her, with her I don't do anything unless the board does it <laughs> he was I very clear that. That was um, a good but they're interested <laughs> they're they are now marketing um, this law firm which is in Orange County is now marketing and looking at at school boards to join the lawsuit um, against Jewel um, because not because of Jewel, but because of the ramifications and the expenses that are involved with uh, providing security, checking bathroom, the whole um, shooting match. So that's one. Um, also, what are we doing about the census? Are we uh, involved in this? I, are we doing anything? I thought they about might have been here. I asked the census people to talk with our district about getting on the agenda, so I don't know what happened. Yes, that's it. And then I saw that we have, a, we've got a letter that they want to use what? For a voting oh, yeah. center. Here. <laughs> that's quite, that's oh, response. Okay. Yeah, yeah so um, they got, they sent us a letter, they asked certain dates, and none of those dates work for us. Uh, they wanted to use 
either this building or Sanborn, and they're all booked. Okay. Because they want them for several. They want them for a week. Yeah. Wait, yeah. a long weekend. Something. Oh no, it's like no, twenty-one we, days, I think. Yeah. It's well, a center. Was, but it's like oh, a, it's a long weekend. It's yeah. a long weekend. It's a long weekend. It's, it's the yeah. long. Yeah. Like the weekend before. It's, yeah. But it's every day, and they need so they need certain they need a thousand square feet. They need a thousand. And they, square, they, and they need, need the a lot parking, of parking. And they need a lot of parking. Parking. So anyway. So um, with that, is there any other further information, business? Crop is having their meeting on Thursday, and um, Michelle, um, yes. because I'll be going off, it would be really good, uh, the former, the Huntington Beach, the board members attend. Okay, great, I'd so love to. Let's, All right. Yeah, okay. let's go. Um, I move that we adjourn the meeting in honor of David Boyd. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, meeting adjourned at 8.53.